<laughs> Hi, everybody. I actually have a studio audience tonight. Mini me is just right off camera, and she was kind of <laughs> there. She is mini me slash Chidi's handler, uh, and she was just kind of vibing to the intro with me for a minute there. So, uh, so yeah. So, hey, welcome to festivities. This is episode fifty-seven. Josh Barnett is our guest tonight, and uh, I got you. I got you so bad. I so got you. Like, so got you. By the way, if you and your kid, if you have children, are not doing this around the house all the time to each other, getting each other constantly, you're not doing it right. Uh, at any rate, um, I got her so bad. Uh, Josh Barnett is our guest tonight. Very exciting because Josh Barnett has been here before. He was an early adopter of festivities. He goes back to episode seven. So round about this year, uh, this time last year, rather, we were doing a Halloween episode with Josh. And that was back when we used to still do the show on Instagram first. And then I would upload it over here to YouTube. Now, of course, we're live here on YouTube and Twitch and Twitter. And uh, so it's a little bit different. We've evolved some, but we wanted to have Josh back. But listen, if you want to naturally, we, I swear to God, we must have talked for like three hours or something. We went we went on such a deep dive on all kinds of uh, horror movies and heavy metal and all kinds of stuff. Always love talking to Josh. So we wanted him back this time. You know, we're going to do the same thing. I told him this time it would not be three hours, though, that we'd try to keep him under an hour. But we will, I'm sure, talk about some of our favorite things. And then uh, Hinato and I definitely have a couple of movies we want to recommend to you. We're not saying they're good, although I think mine is actually quite good. But they're kind of cult classics or kind of old, older movies that we think you might enjoy. So we each picked one that we would recommend for you guys. But uh, we'll also talk about UFC 280, what went down this weekend. So Chidi uh, and Chidi's Choice went one for one in his picks last week. He did pick TJ Dillashaw. We know that Al Jermaine was uh, still the champion. But Chidi actually did pick. Islam Makhachev to beat Charles Oliveira last week. So Chidi went one and one. And I believe uh, his record overall now is nine and one. Damn impressive. So later tonight, well, I'll just show you here. Here's what, let me just show you uh, what we have coming up for you guys tonight uh, on the hit list. So we have Josh Barnett and we're going to get hyped for Halloween. Uh, you know, like I said, he knows all about horror, horror movies, metal, the right, everything. So we'll get into that with Josh. Then yeah, UFC 280 reactions and, uh, and, and that and recap, get into that. But yeah, Chidi's choice looking ahead. Chidi has made his prediction for Calvin Cater versus Arnold Allen. I'm working that fight this weekend. I am very excited. I'll have my, my, uh, my guys, Alan Joe Ben and Anthony Lionheart Smith Smith with me. So I'm very excited to see those guys and we will be working the Cater Allen fight, which is just a fantastic matchup and see here's where it gets a little tricky because we're starting to have a lot of former festivities guests fighting each other like it kind of sucks so next week this weekend rather tim means the dirty bird is going to be fighting our boy max Payne griff and so both of those guys have been on the show before as you know max Payne griff has popped in a lot but if you want the exact just all max Payne griff episode Come on, KB, you meant to write this down before, and I got a little distracted. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so Max Paint Griff is episode 28. If you want the Max Griffin interview uh, and, and uh, episode of festivities with him, and the Dirty Bird, the Tim Means episode is episode 39, and the Tim Means episode is actually already up on audio as well. The, dirt, the uh, one with Max Paint Griff is not up there yet, but today I put the former episode with Calvin Cater up online uh, for audio download as well. That was number 19. So Calvin Cater is the main event this weekend. He is a guest of ours. We talked to him before he fought Giga that time. We know he won that fight and uh, we had a really good time with him. So anyway, we will be doing another Chidi's Choice. And also, you know, uh, if we have time, we're going to talk about Jake Paul and Anderson Silva. I'm curious what you guys think about that and other uh, MMA news and, uh, and relationship advice. If you have any questions, get them in early or whatever so we can think about them. Uh, what is the peanut gallery? What is so funny over there tonight, kid? Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Yeah, she got, I said Jake Paul. I was just like, what? What? Uh, is Jay, he's kind of a he's kind of a goof, right? Yeah, like she's like I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm not a fan. I'm just a fan. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, I do really like this skeleton onesie. I'm not gonna lie. 
I wish they would let me wear it on the air at work. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be fun to do the show in costumes. That'd be, that'd actually be really fun to do a full, you know, I wore this once before and I've done it. I've done it for Halloween where I did a, like the full kind of more skeleton makeup, but I didn't do that tonight. I kind of half and half it. <laughs> I have no idea what Hanato is going to be looking like when he uh, shows up, but thank you, Mark Strickland saying KB Spire tonight. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, hello, Shiger Tark. Hello, Aloha, fellow fisters. Is that a good nickname for followers of the show? The kid is laughing. So I don't know. Is that a good thing or not? Fisters? I, would, I, I feel like it would be like a reveler would be involved in some festivities. I don't know. I don't know if fisting is going to be. It's gonna be in the name. Oh my god! Of the of our of our fan base, because that is that's funny. AQ, another fantastic addition of Tuesday night festivities, and yes, we got the War Master on Josh Barnett. Uh, he's such a good dude. Uh, oh, thank you, Brandon, for appreciating the, the, the costume. Thank you for that. Uh, so, yeah, it is really great to see you. Uh, uh, Andy, thank you. Hey, KB, pleasure seeing you jump rope progression. Definitely got you in great shape. Thank you. I agree. You know, it's one of those things where I wish I had found it earlier in my life. Um, but it is what it is, right? What's good? Boxing MMA 365. That's what I was saying. Skipping rope is good. As you know, if you got boxing in your name, then you know about skipping rope. Like I said, it's one of those things I did. You know, everybody jumps rope. But I did not, not know I would enjoy it as much as I actually do. Uh, just like for fun. Like I just, I yeah, I was doing it yesterday. I did not get to jump today. But I, I was jumping yesterday and I was really enjoying it. So, yeah. So, okay. So a lot of uh, let's just say, um, administrative work to do here for a second. We are on Spotify, Apple podcasts, Amazon music, and Stitcher as well. If you want to download the shows. So like I said, we got a bunch of them up there. Uh, I don't know exactly how many we have up there now, but I would say 37 or 37, probably about 30 episodes up so far. Uh, I'm going back through the catalog and just uploading. So some of them I was kind of just going in reverse order. But like I said earlier today, I put up the Calvin Cater episode because Calvin's fighting this weekend and I thought we might want to hear it. And so I'll probably later this week also put up the one we have with Khalil Rountree because Khalil Rountree is fighting. Guess who, everybody? Say it with me, Dustin Jacoby. And Dustin was on with us just a couple of weeks ago, uh, two episodes ago. We had we had uh, Michael Chiesa on with us last week, and we had Dustin Jacoby the week before. So Dustin is fighting this weekend. He talks all about the fight with Khalil, talks all about getting his nick nickname, the Hanyak, uh, talks all about his days in glory, MMA, fighting as a kickboxer, coming up early uh, in the scene and everything, his couple of stints in the UFC, uh, just sort of being a Midwestern guy. He's a real good dude, trains out of Colorado. He's with you know mark montoya and the fight uh, uh factory x guys so we had a really good talk with him so you should go back and check that out i believe that would be episode 55 with dustin jacoby and i don't remember i can look which one the khalil is um i want to say it's in the 20s or 30s and um and yeah so a lot of the folks like i said we also have tim Meads, we have we have max Payne griff a lot of folks have been on the show it's fun if you like our show please tell your friends about it please hit the subscribe button okay Wait, wait, wait. Hey, kid, wait, you're going to do this right, okay? Hey, everybody, here's a here's my phone. Yep, here's my phone. And um, if you guys have one of these, this is actually a Samsung S21. Um, but if you guys have one of these, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to um, YouTube, where you might be watching, and you're going to go to the, the Karen Bryant channel where you're watching, and you're going to hit subscribe. Um, and that way you'll get, you know, like notifications and things for my new video uploads and you want, you want to like, right. What else? And like, and sub, um, tell your friends. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's cool. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> comment, 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 down below. comment down below. And, and, oh yeah, my rings are pretty cool too, huh? They are pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's me giving a little pitch about the show, but it is episode 57. We're having a great time with this. Uh, I I have plans. We have plans of, of, of trying to take this bigger, but we love all of you originals. And while I don't know if Fisters is going to be the name, I do definitely agree that we need something for the OGs. 
uh yeah we need something and thank you randy uh for already subscribing and yeah yeah you know cortez getting patty and mall you know mall's a dear friend of mine and talking about getting them on the show right now it's really the time difference so maybe when they get stateside for their fights we can try to get them on i know they're in very high demand and you know since patty has his own podcast sometimes people who have their own podcast don't want to do other people's podcasts but he is very cool. They're both great. I love them. So, uh, yeah, we will do our best to get people on that everyone loves and adores. Uh, in the meantime, and instead, we have the 27-time world jiu-jitsu champion. You know, some people love and adore him. He loves to love them and leave them. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in Henato Laranja. Hi. Uh, uh, look at me. Uh, to all the girls. I never loved before. Um, look at uh, speaking of people who has been adored and 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 treasure for s several years. Look at wait a second, and then on another subject, look at you. You like? I like that. What the fuck is that? Like, okay, it's so it's a onesie. It's a it's a it's oh, a skeleton. Oh, oh wait, God, oh, yeah. <laughs> wait, that's a choosy as far as I'm concerned. Wait, let me see that shit. It's a, it's a, it's a onesie, and then it's oh. got like a, it's, it, I don't, I can't, I'm not, I can't, oh. I'll post pictures. Let me, if that's a onesie, let me see that onesie. Let me see that ones. <laughs> hey, I feel like your cheeks is, is dying to get out of there. Like a Dracula's coffin. They're not, they're not. I Listen, the it, this is the reaching on, out. I think the cheeks have flowers on them. Oh, God, are you? I, I, the flowers is in full bloom. Uh, <laughs> Those roses. Oh God, I, I leave pauses when I'm when I'm killed. That one. How have you been? <sighs> Better now. I uh, for some reason this is this is you look like a Creole witch. Uh, that is uh, a succubus. <clears throat> you look like a succubus, and you're looking like you you had it to suck the soul out of out of some unsuspecting um young man. <laughs> Oh, you see the wife beater underneath that one. Kind of. they would, yeah, they would be unsuspecting. Do they, I think they do? They, I don't know if I feel like I don't know if I could sneak up on a dude unsuspecting. I feel like they know they would hear your cheek clapping <laughs> like as you as you try to sneak in, you know, like you tiptoe like a burglar and then behind you it goes plop, 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 and then he go like this. Oh, God, are you three, five, four, five? I smell the blood of my cheeks. That actually happens. <laughs> I've said this before, but uh, if my shorts don't have enough compression, compression when I'm jumping. <laughs> oh, God, I, oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Trust me. Oh, God, I, I want to, I want to, yeah, never mind. Okay. So, hey, listen, Hinato, um, our guest is actually already here and I should bring him in. I want to let folks know that, you know, episode seven of our show last year, Josh Barnett was on with us wow. and seven. we talked all about, um, you know, uh, horror movies and heavy metal and just MMA, all kinds of great stuff. But you guys, yes, Dracula, but you have a no, film Blackula. with Josh. So I'll let you intro that first. And then, and because I have so a what with you, Josh, you and Josh Barnett worked on a film project together in the past. We did work on a film. We did. Um, we did a heat boot of uh, uh, Brokeback Mount. Now that could be under the horror section for some people, <laughs> but for us, it was it was a, a, a under romance. Well, and adult good. adult themes. Adult drama, yes. Adult Sexu feet. Yeah, warning, feet. Yeah, sex sexuality. What warning for mean? for uh, blood, uh, uh, semen, and feces. Oh God! And you know how it says sometimes cigarette it. smoke. Or whatever yeah. you know, or, or something. Yeah. In our movie, there was it was a lot. It went beyond that, God, I, mean. I think I don't remember that though. I just remember um, a bond between two men that uh, really could not be broken. And I'm so glad it has yeah. not been broken. And I'm so glad he agreed to join us again, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. The War Master Josh Barnett. No, oh, what's? Oh, hello, oh. hello, hello. Hey, Look, it's the War Master. Oh, I see that uh, Hanach is here to declare that the penis is evil. Yeah, yes, but the not well. The yes, the penis, the gun is good. The penis, yes. not so much. No, you know? which is, no, no. You no. know what? I feel Josh Barnett that Zardoz is probably the opposite 
uh, the anti, uh, uh, the opposite message from our movie, which is Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> You understand? Well, the the penis and the gun were basically just interchangeable in that case, you know. Yeah. Nothing but hot lead dispensed all over oh, the place. Oh, God, are you? You know, I, uh, hot lead, boy, huh? You already you're already doing your pillow chalk. Uh, By the way, uh, that's a great name for a band, hot lead. I'm surprised. Sure. There has to be. There has yeah. to be. It, it, it's yeah. got to be just nothing but tons of hairspray, spandex. <laughs> Uh, unnecessary bandanas tied up in all kinds of places. And at least one person has to wear a onesie. Nice. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, Josh Barnash was, was encumbered with some other stuff. I, I heard that, that Karen, Bright was, was, Karen Bryant was, was done raising the stakes tonight for the, for yeah, the men. I, I, yeah. Please, raising Hayes. I, I'm trying to haze Kane. Uh, sugar Kane. <laughs> Hayes Kane. Hayes Kane. Uh, uh, let me to see the back of that one. I want to make sure. I want to buy no, that one. I, I, no, I'm not sure. No. If I want to buy, it yet. No, I can't. I, I don't. Tell me where that one is made. I could you pull that one off? <laughs> I could I in the height of the circumstance. It, it, it's got like on the hip bones, and it's got like a little. It's connected to the. Uh, yeah, I was just. Bone. I was just about to say. Uh, the hip bones is connected. <laughs> It's connected to Hena Uncle Hanachi bomb. It's it's uh, like an old Mother Hubbard, okay? They gave. Oh, it, what what's the that thing uh, about the farmer and bingo? Yeah. Well, I remember it's, old Mother spot. Hubbard. Uh, what was the thing? Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her old, poor dog a bone, but when uh, what was, was but when there. she bent but when she bent over, Hubbard drove her. He had a bone of his own. Oh God, are you? <laughs> I don't think that's You know what, though, uh, what? Hassan, the only thing that could could uh, match up with such ingenious rhymes is when the boys go rushing, Mr. Hyde starts crushing. The oh. crowd is rushing as the blood comes gushing. Well, I'll tell you. Um, I mean, is it, are we already going to the Golden Goose? Or are we saying that cannot, for the main? Uh, oh, course, it's just a, it's just a little, it's just, it's just a tip. Just a tip. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. We won't. We won't address that yet. But um, yeah, but yes. Get... I appreciate that you came. You know, I could have. There's a couple of wigs I could have thrown on. There's a couple of stuff for <laughs> vampire fans or whatever. But you know what? I chose to put out Zardoz because, in a way, this movie is so arresting. It's 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 more it's more dramatic than even to have that sometimes. So if you know, if you don't know Zardoz, you're not gonna give a shit. Uh, but if you know Zardoz, know what it, you're gonna. Is what is? What is? I don't know what Zardoz is, Zanato. It's a okay, lot of cocaine, so... British people, and uh, a gigantic floating head. It's maybe the weirdest studio movie ever made. It's arguable. Yeah. It it it, it, it it's it's the one movie that Sean Connery did that people is like, excuse me, like what the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, have you ever seen pictures of Sean Connery floating around the internet where he's got a long pony chair, he's got a bare chest with a bandolier, he's got a six shooter, and he's wearing Hick James boots. Yes. Oh my God. No. And he has a yeah. hairy no. chest. Okay. Oh, it's, and this it's, is yeah. a post apocalyptic film, and everybody has like uh, British service weapons from World War II. Yeah, like, it's, where it, did he get that? It's the most bonkers get... fucking movie it sounds you've ever very seen in your life. Ish. Like, There's a lot like, of oh, uh, it, no, no. Yeah, Barbarella make you feel good when you watch that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one make you feel depressed and anxious. <laughs> yes, you know it makes you this feel one, as if that there's something wrong with your pituitary gland. <laughs> yeah, it, you feel like you have an existential crisis when you watch this one. <laughs> you, it, I remember watching this as a child. The only reason I watched this was because, like, I think my mom brought me over to some dude's house or something, and, like, they go off in wherever, and then I'm there. It's like, hey, watch TV. But in the <laughs> old days, you know, now you got cable. You can choose what the fuck you want to watch. Yeah. So at that mm -hmm. time, it's like three channel, whatever. It's either, like, the news, some old fucking, like, uh, you know, black and white film, which I like now, but, you know, I, you know, I, 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 at that time, I, you know, the three studios. Was the only thing I like in black and white. And then you got like something like Zardoz. And 
you sit there, you're like, you know, seven, eight years old, and you're like, well, I guess Zardoz it is, you know? And you sit there and you watch this fucking shit. It's like you're having the acid trip. And because it's, because it's, how can I explain? I've never, I it's, had a it's, I've never heard of it. It's bizarre and like an acid trip, but boring at the same time. <laughs> you yeah. imagine. It's like a slog. And it oh, make you yeah. feel it make you feel okay. lonely. Oh, okay. Wait. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. Oh, what the actual heck am I looking oh, yeah. at here? And you have no idea. Yeah. No, oh, you're right. not prepared. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And it is fucking out there. Even as an Dude, adult. What is that? No, I'll is, tell you. Like, what is he actually wearing? Uh that's what the warriors wear, or whatever the class it's what of he, person he was. It's Borat on the barbarian or barber, whatever. Borat but I'll tell you Bar this. Barbarella, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, it, it's heavily influenced by Hick James, you know. And at the time, Hick James was very influential. Um, after he was, he was, he used to be in a, a, her a outfit. Yeah. Oh God, are you? Oh yeah, I'd have that chick from Angel Heart. Yeah. What's her name? Lots Charlotte. Of, uh... Charlotte Hampling. Hampling, yes, and uh, lots of muslin and see-through cl uh, cloths and such, but no boners whatsoever. And it, it's the director, is, exact. This. And it, it, and there's um the director is John Borman. John it's, Borman. It's, just, it's some fucking out there, fucking shit. It's like having a. Was, were they all a like cerebral? When they were making it? I I think Borman I had done uh, Point Blank with Lee Marvin. Brilliant uh -huh. film, amazing, right. and crowd pleasing. After, it's not too weird, you know. Yeah, no, it is. It is very intense, though. Uh, yeah, but 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 fun. But, it's a yeah. genre. It's a genre picture. Yes, and I don't recall what his next film was after that. But you come Zardoz is like seventy seven, maybe. I don't remember. Maybe because even earlier he does than that. Excalibur after that. I think. Oh, Excalibur is good. That is Excalibur good. Excalibur is the shit. Excali when you watch that now, oh God, are you? Zardoz was 1974. Yeah, that's yeah, pre-Excalibur. Uh, I guess yeah. after that, they're like, I, I don't know what your problem is, John, but uh, if you cut us in on the drugs that allowed yeah. you exactly. to make this movie, Seriously. we'll give you another one. That's Seriously. probably why they didn't let, let him do another we a movie as weird again. They were like, okay, we let you have all total control, and you did this. Like, chill the fuck out. You know what right. I mean? Like, we, we gotta did do uh, the Emerald Forest after that. Oh yeah, like eighty with the Powers Booth. Like the uh, Powers Booth. Powers Booth. Yeah. Oh, our favorite, our favorite hatch from uh, 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 Extreme Prejudice. Oh, <laughs> of course. Oh, Extreme Prejudice. What a film. <laughs> Extreme I told, Prejudice. I told you the the story about Extreme Prejudice. I I liked that movie so much in the theater. I was watching with my father, and my father was famous for this. He would go to the movie and fall the fuck asleep. He used it as a chime to just conk out. Um, yeah. Some chime, some chime. Um, and because this guy keep weird hours, you know? And then so he would fall asleep. And then I liked the fucking movie so much. He was still asleep when the credits start hauling at the end that I was like, okay, I got to keep him. I got to keep quiet. I sat there. I wanted to watch again. Again? This, yeah. this fucking guy is, is like this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, are you? And then I'm like, please, please don't let him wake up. And then there's a part where, like, somebody deliver a bunny to some, like, a live bunny habit that they hate with explosives. And in the theater, the fucking boom, the, the explosion was so fucking loud. He went like this. He went, oh, hey, hey, what the? You know what I mean? He was like, say, Jim, what, what the? What? Right. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my father, he, you know, he, he spent a lot of time in, like, he was in the Mohins. He was in also, you know, uh, um, state facility, you know, correctional facilities and stuff like that. So he, and the when you wake, dojo. And, 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 and when yeah. you wake him up, he oh, tends to, like, right. say, say, Jim. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> say, bro. You know what I mean? So, what? so like, you got to watch out. Like, I remember, like, trying to wake my dad. Hey, dad, brother. And he go like this. He go. You got like this is my arm, like telling him, and you go like, hey, oh, oh, okay, okay, oh. big time, oh, okay, big time. <laughs> yeah. What I, I feel like this is this maybe is a generational thing because my dad, I, you we used to have to go and wake him up, and it's like you just just like keep distance, just kind of just touch him or you know do it from a distance, you know say something from a distance because he'll get up like what? Yeah, it's, it's like waking up a bear. 
<laughs> because it was hard scrabble chimes then they had to yeah. fight for food and shelter and whatever the fuck is going <laughs> it was, on it was yeah. it was zardoz was a was a documentary hey, it so was, listen, yeah. Yeah. do you remember back then when you were a kid then so do you remember like in terms of horror movies and stuff like the first one that you watched that you mm. either were like okay I'm too young to be watching this, but I'm mm. going to watch it anyway. Or the first one that scared the crap out of you. Because for me, it was probably like Alien or whatever, where you're like, yeah, oh. I, I wanted to see this. And now I don't know why I wanted to see this. I took, uh, I took Shayna Baszler and Jessamyn Duke with me to watch a cut of Alien. It was a double feature at the, the New Bev. It was ah. Alien. And it was this extended cut, which I had never seen, which had a bunch of deleted scenes in it that... Cool. I understood why they cut them. Like they, you didn't lose anything in the movie, but yeah. as the nerd that I am, I liked having them there. Like I appreciated yeah. it even more. Uh, but uh, and then uh, the, the the double feature, the second part was uh, that documentary on uh, Yodorowsky's Dune. But anyway, so we're watching. Oh, that. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jessamyn Duke had never seen original Alien. What? And I don't think Shayna had seen it for forever. And I remember watching them just on the edge of their seats, just like fucking scared shitless. At one point, I creeped around and touched Jessamine's shoulder out of nowhere in this really yeah. tense scene, which could be practically the whole fucking movie. Right. Uh, any, anytime you have Fat Koto speaks, that's the intense scene because you oh. know he's going to fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, say some oh I love Yafet Koto. Me too. Rest in peace. But, uh, but I touched her shoulder. She went literally stiff as a board. And just went shit. <laughs> her, her Kentucky accent in the middle of the new bed was great. But that movie, is, not only is it an incredible feat of direction and writing, like they, that is a perfect film. The special effects and the tension, the lighting is so incredible yeah. that it will stand up today against anything, any CGI. You, you know why I think that? I, 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 I've tried to think about this a lot because. The way that those fucking movies affected me and still affect me is different than something with the CGI. And I, th I think it's this. It's a thing that exists in the same space as the actor. Yes. So, so you can't... Somehow your mind knows the difference. Yes. I was watching... You know what I was... Speaking of scary <clears throat> shit, I was watching... Um, you, you remember The Hitcher? Oh yes, with Rutger Hauer. I, that movie's gnarly as shit. Wet it's Craven, so good. Yeah. I haven't seen that since maybe back when I was a kid when it first came out. When I watched it just on, on a went, whim. I I want to. I'm gonna hold this back to to bring. I don't want to spoil this scene for anyone because we've got all these Zoomer yeah, shits yeah. and millennials right. that have never seen anything. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of surprises uh, in that one. Yeah, no, you guys, all you young folks, you really do need to watch this. Uh, it's a, if you like horror films, uh, try to do it without being on your phone and running your Facebook and doing everything all at the same time. You yeah, multitaskers. But um, yeah, there's that 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 there's that scene. We're not even to the end of the movie yet, and all of a sudden, in with the truck stop, you're like, they did uh -huh. that, didn't they? That, yeah, we're just we're moving the movie that way. By the way. You know what? F you, basically. Like, you're going to eat this I, right Let now. me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. That movie, I was so impressed because we took that shit for granted back then. Mm -hmm. Back then, when you saw a car chase or you saw a guy fall off a building in a fucking Burt Hannels movie or, or whatever it stick. is. You're talking about it, yeah. stick, aren't you? Ah, uh, stick. <laughs> um, but <laughs> when they did it, the thrill was, this is a... This is, this is someone, he might not be the actor, but a person is doing this shit. And there's a thrill about that, that you just don't get in a Fast and Furious when you know it's all no. just sh graphics. I, and, well, it, you know, there was also a thrill when the body, like the human, in the, in, the, in, the, in the scene starts falling and then the cup comes and you just see the floppy dummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you pick out all that shit. Sure. <laughs> but, it's just like wiggling. <laughs> but even so, you feel, you just, it, it's thrilling, you know, and you no, feel that. Right. You, in your gut, you feel, and, and, Look, and, um, and that's no, the you, thing. You need your movies to be as real as the favela. I need that because I've, I've experienced that. And, I agree but, with but, you. But uh, uh, what was I gonna say? 
uh, I think we took for granted that stuff back then. So when I watch that now, I was imagining all all the shit that was going through these car flips and shit that's going on in this movie. I'm like, God, I, this is fucking crazy. This is insane, you know? Yeah. There's, um, an, it's, there's a, a, a horror film, uh, Maniac, Cop, Maniac Cop 2, and there is a car chase scene, or it's not a, uh, it's not a chase scene, but there's a car gag scene. Uh-huh. And you look at this thing and you go, did they were they just did just did just need their sad card that bad? <laughs> we're gonna do this stunt the, because the I swear, is yes. this, yeah, this car is flying down a hill and there's a gal like uh handcuffed to the open door and it's just like everything's all over the place. I'm just going, is she steering it with one hand while she's dr- being drugged, handcuffed to a door? It's just it, it, you just watch it and go like uh Okay, well, you don't really get to fake that. It's just not happening. You can't. Yeah. And also, crazy. Robert Davi comes into the series. Robert Davi. <laughs> oh my goodness I, gracious! I got to meet Robert Davi when I worked on movies. Oh, Robert Davi. Movies, uh, and we had Robert Davi come on. I forget what movie it was for, but he always played the bad guy. Oh you yeah. Know, and all these things. Well, because of that face, the pock marks and stuff. Exactly. And it was on TBS and it was me and George Gray. And it was like, we used to come in between movies. We'd show these, you know, cheesy like action movies and stuff. And then, you know, whatever we do things, you know, a lot sort of thematically involved. Was it movies. Action like, Jackson? Step you up with explosive people, hang out with stunt people, you know, do all kinds. I met the real Frank Dukes from Bloodsport, all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, don't um, get us started on that fucking guy. No. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. But we, we did that whole thing and it was just like. Oh my God! Like I, uh, yeah, it, it, we have I, that in a in a in a yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Keith. is like he's what you want him to be, and you know he's got. I bless his heart. It was a bad rug, and it oh. was you know like the whole thing. And but he was so cool. And that's Robert Dobby for you playing those roles. I I would I met Keith David once, and I, I needed to get a chance to be to talk to him about all the cool roles he's done. Oh, uh, that dude! Just, what, a, what a sick voice, and also. Wouldn't it be? Cr- I'd love to hang out with like Brian Thompson from. Uh, wait, wait, he, 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 he my, my neighbor, you know. John. Wait, he might meet Brian Thompson. What? Yeah, he, he gets like killed him. with with Bill Paxton in the beginning of the Terminator. He also plays the main villain in Cobra Pig. Oh, him, Pig. him, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, and also Requiem for wasn't, a Dream. He's creepy as hell. So. Oh, I bet he is. Wait, wasn't he? In Requiem, wasn't he a Jennifer ballet Connelly, a professional? You know, Jennifer Connelly's really strung out, and she wants some heroin. Oh, oh, I thought we were talking about Brian Chomps. Oh, no. You, you're talking about Keith David. Keith David sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know who the fuck Keith David is, but Brian Chompson, I, I never, yeah, I never Brian heard. Yeah, Brian Chompson. Yeah, he, uh, he but was... But when you said uh, Cobra, call him, bro. Yeah, he's the main bad guy in Cobra. He also plays a bad guy in the Cynthia Rothrock movie. He's supposed to be her brother, but he can't do any actual martial arts. It's pretty bad. Yeah, he was a ballet dancer, no? Uh, he's something like that, yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, in, in, in Brazil, we call that movie Corribrinha. Corribrinha. I know Corribrinha. This place is right yeah. up the street from my house. And that's why he's, he's um, named after that, because he would look like a little Sauvage Stallone. You know what I mean? And they, that's why he got the nickname, Corribrinha. He, he also keeps uh, all of his gun cleaning supplies in the refrigerator. Well, of course. And he all snip his, his, his pizza slice <laughs> with the scissors. What the fuck is he thinking? Oh, Josh Barnett, do you realize? Do you realize that that movie? I don't know if we talked about this before, but oh, it's a good movie, by the way, for an '80s action flick. It's, it's a lot of fun. Like, it's, it's, delivered, it's a lot it of fun. Delivers. Yeah, um, I thought but, that the uh, the antagonists are actually really decently constructed. Yeah, with the hammers and whatnot. But 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 let me just tell you something. Um, you know, originally, I don't know if you guys know. You you have to know this, but um, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. The original cast of that was fucking Sylvester Stallone, okay? Really? It was going to be a... Yeah, okay? So here's the deal. It was all set to go. It was in motion. And this fucking guy kept on trying to add stuff, and he had the script, okay? And then yeah. he wanted it to... He right. started getting hit of any comedic elements in there and started making it like, I'm the coolest guy in the world. And then the reason why he, he wanted to be called... You know, that's where the Axel shit, he wanted to be called Axel Foley. Um, and then 
because it's Detroit or whatever, he wanted to be called the Motor City Cobra, which is uh, oh. which is um, um, oh, that's uh, Hearns, Tommy Hearns. Hey, yeah, Hearns, uh, Tommy Hearns. Uh, that was before he was the hitman. Uh, so, right, so, hitman. so, this fucking guy is making all this fucking bullshit. He's gonna do this. He's gonna have this cool car. He's gonna have this. He's gonna have the matches and this and that and all this horse shit. And and he's turning turn it into dog shit. Okay. And then so finally the 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 whoever Universal Paramount whatever was like, listen, fuck this. And they had to cut ties with him. Okay. And then against the 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 fucking best wishes of 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 the studio mark martin breast was fighting for eddie murphy and there was like no fucking way and based on the strength of, of 48 hour so mm -hmm. finally they just they was under the gun whatever they said okay fuck it eddie murph and then the has his history but all the shit that was in the shit that was all the ideas they didn't like of right. his about that was gonna go into Beverly Hills Cop, he turned into Cohib Cohibrinia. <laughs> so, so basically, he Cobra instead. Co Cohibrinia is his his like this is my this is my driving Miss Daisy. Isn't Cobra where he drives <laughs> that black like Plymouth the sled? Exactly, uh, Mercury. Yeah, the, the Plymouth uh, sled, uh, right? chop top Mercury. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and it have the cheesiest. It have the cheesiest yeah. line on history where the where the guy's gonna blow up the the supermarket, and he goes, "I'll blow this fucking place up." And he goes, "Go ahead, I don't shop here." He goes, "Go ahead, <laughs> I don't shop here." And of course, he doesn't actually have a holster for his pistol; he just keeps it in his in his pants. Uh, yeah, uh, so he can shoot his fucking dick off. Yeah, it don't make any sense. <laughs> and oh, oh and Brigitte, and he threw he threw his wife at the Chinese Brigitte Brigitte Nielsen or whatever. Nielsen, right. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so listen, Josh, I got it. Since this is the Halloween episode, now I got to ask mm. you, what's the, is, has there, okay, well, I guess maybe, okay, first and foremost. Oh, 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 to, 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 to answer that question that you asked me. To, oh, yeah, to yeah, we didn't even, got, fuck. I like how we, we got like, uh, hey, was wow. uh, Extreme Prejudice, was he, was it Walter Hill? I think so. So did we just come full circle with uh, 48 40 hours, hour? Walter oh, Hill? Yeah, there we go. And I was just probably. telling my lady about how she needs to watch The Warriors with me because <gasps> Walter Hill, great film. Also, oh, so and I go, you know, you'll dig it because guess what else Walter Hill directed? And she's like, what? And I go, that movie we love, Streets of Fire. Oh, nice. Uh, that is one of the most can unique. Can you dig it, though? Can you <laughs> yeah. dig it? Can you dig it? Yeah. It, that's I was an AC movie. Turnbull in, in, in another life. Oh, you definitely, <laughs> there's no question that that's yeah. what team you would be on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, my God. Been the baseball team, to be honest. No, you would have been the in the Lizzie's. Lizzie's. You would have been on the, you would have been the lesbian gang <laughs> who tried to, who tried to jap you when you're not looking. Oh, right. Yeah, we're at the party and everything's cool, but. Yeah, you pretend you want to, you want to do intercourse and then. And then you 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 yeah, you put the pull, yeah, pull knives and yeah. switchblades and and blackjacks and all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> blackjacks. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was young, my mom used to keep a fucking blackjack in the glove compartment, no, really? and I remember like that's so old school. I was like, mom, you really gonna like? I remember there was a thing about uh about yeah. a parking spot. And there was like a grown man who was a big grown man. I'm a kid. And then my the, the guy started coming over to talk some shit. And my mom opened it as if she had a gun. She fucking got the blackjack. And I thought to myself, either my mom is, is a baddest bitch on earth or she is delusional. You know, and luckily it didn't it didn't get to it. But I like now I can respect. I'm like, she had that fucking she she pulled out the blackjack for her. But could you, you know? imagine like, you know, she, it's small enough. She doesn't see it. She gets out the car. Hey, what's your problem? Bip. And he's just out. Yeah. Just and then just beat him to myself. death in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the movies, yeah. the horror movies that I wasn't supposed to watch. Yeah. That mm. was almost all of them. Uh, except I really did love stuff like Them and Bug and all these like. Oh, any you know, of that type that of nature against man or whatever <laughs> yeah 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 and uh uh this side of the earth and no, <laughs> night of the lepus <laughs> but oh i'm not uh, saying that gargoyles oh with with, with uh, you bringing it full circle that's the star of of fucking dr black and mr hyde and uh, sabrina yes, casey yes but it, uh my, my favorite horror films my favorite horror films as a kid were friday the 13th 
And as soon as I saw uh, yeah. Jason with That's hard part to be. three with the mask, I was yeah. hooked. But I didn't, as a kid, it didn't make any sense to me. So I'd see part one, super pissed, no Jason. I'm like, fuck this movie. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. But yeah. it is actually quite good. I felt I was ripped off. Uh, part two with the bag on the head, I didn't like it. But now, actually, it's a much better movie as I look back on it. Also, oh, yeah. I love how they tie in the end of two right into three, and then it kicks in that that boom, 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 and that fucking that disco shit. Yeah, fucking music. It hits. It hits. Is the that is the hottest fucking fire. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's like. I, you know, I, I've been doing a deep dive. You know that podcast I told you to, to uh, I turned you on to um, the archives, video archives, uh, uh, the, the Tarantino uh, and, okay. and Hodger Avery have a podcast hmm. uh, about the movies. Oh, you, you didn't fuck with that? It's about the movies that Tarantino uh, yeah. and Hodger Avery, oh, okay. uh, um, when they worked at the video store, they have a podcast where they go oh, through shit. their okay, favorite okay. movies. Yeah, anyway, I shared it with you, probably too busy to, to remember that one. But... <laughs> Um, uh, the last couple episodes, um, they have, um, Eli Hoth on there and they just going through all the Italian, uh, giallo oh, movies I'm and, gonna watch this for sure. and the American giallo, you know? So, but to me, it have almost like a giallo sound, like a, like, as if it's like a funky Italian disco soundtrack, like, boom, 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 boom. you know, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's anybody who's listening right now, go to YouTube later afterwards. And, and look up intro, intro yeah. to Friday the 13th Part 3, and you're not going to be disappointed. I, I, I haven't watched those in so long, but I remember those being like so, so scary. Like that was like the uh, definition of a... Yeah. When you're a kid, one, yeah. One through yeah. four. One through four yeah. are actually scary. Five sucks. I don't care any revision. Man, I, tries which to, one like, is that one? What, what, what? That's the one where it's not even actually Jason and see, see somebody like imitates oh, him. Oh, no. Oh, no. way, it's garbage. In six, they bring him back to life, and then you've got like uh, metal soundtracks that Alice Cooper doing the theme song and all this. Which number is, is which number is um Jason check Manhattan? Eight. <laughs> that one is where they check li care, care? they check liberties with that one, Carlos. Yes, they do. Takes Manhattan. They check fucking liberties. I knew exactly which which Jason. <laughs> Seven. No, I like that. Fun. Seven's got this kill where. He grabs a girl in a sleeping bag and zips it up and then whips her up against a tree. And I'm yes. just like, in the theater, I mean, there's no blood in that. And I'm just like, oh. Because you imagine what the fuck is happening just, to her. Wrapping someone, a human body in a, in a sleeping bag by some seven foot tall zombie maniac so hard that it just swap and whips around that tree. And then that's done. That all she holds. Just jelly. Back in the day, seeing movies like that in the theater was so mm. fucking fun. To especially if you went to like a ghetto theater or like something that's like yeah. uh, um, um, Chinese Square or something like that, where people where talk like to the screen. people is smoking weed in the theater, people is drinking alcohol, you know, and they are like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Like, right. oh god, I. Yeah, you Look, might basically, catch like neon maniacs there, or you might uh, catch the was it the executioner, uh, yeah. the 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 which is a um uh death wish ripoff kind of except oh, the, the oh i remember the execute have the same guy from white lightning or what oh no white yes. uh white yes uh white what? yeah white what, what white, fire. White, white fire white fire <laughs> sorry we, we're digging into the fucking weeds right now i'm sorry <laughs> See, i'm sorry and let me tell you something it's not on you cam branch you shouldn't know what the fuck this stuff says yeah, oh god it's so, there, okay. there's a scene in white fire where you know so they're all trying to top uh scarface right with the chainsaws okay. well white fire also has a chainsaw duo which is pretty dope but and it has some it has some futuristic it's a no it's a um it's a crime it's a action kind of thing. it's an action, action spectacular yeah it's like about drugs and shit like that it's like okay. but it also has like cocaine? some is cocaine the white fire no oh, or is it, he, or is it it's diamond? like he's it's a diamond He's white fire as far as I'm concerned because he's a white man on the cover and he have a chainsaw <laughs> yeah. and he looks fine as hell. No, I'm kidding. No, but he I looked like... Who, what's his name? That fucking actor that was in Execution? Oh, he's a I can't remember He's name, a dude... Yeah. I used to get him Google confused. That for you. I used to be it, confused it, with 
with the guy who used to look like the guy from Body Double who looked like Bill Maher or whatever. Oh, that's Bill. That's Bill. Um, Bill who just passed away. Bill William Hurt. No, 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 not, not William Hurt. No. William Hurt well, never wait, looked he like. He was in Body Heat, though. No, no, Body Double. Oh, Body Double. Sorry, Body Heat. The, the, the um. Fire. Two Russian siblings living in Istanbul, Turkey, who work in the fire <laughs> fencing business, scheme to steal the newly discovered. Hold on, wait. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, I'm trying to read it. I own oh. this on DVD, by the way. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That white diamond. The uh, uh, that white... Legendary diamond <laughs> white fire. But yes. the rivals have other <clears throat> plans in mind. Robert Ginty. Oh, Robert Ginty. That's fucking it. Yeah. So, let, yeah. Ginty. Robert also, Ginty. Also famous for uh, this movie with this. He rides on a motorcycle that. And there's a giant dump truck that comes after him and stuff like that. And Donald Pleasance is in it. It's this horrible post-apocalyptic movie. That sounds about right. But who's oh, the other guy? Scene, who's the guy I'm thinking about Warrior that looked like Bill Maher? Warrior the, of the but, Lost World. Terrible, awesome movie. And I don't know who, how they got Donald Pleasance. Well, he'll do. He'll do. Look, <laughs> listen. Um, wait. What, what, uh, what was the guy that looked like Bill Maher from Body Double? What the fuck is his name? Okay, let me. Mm. But I used to uh, always get them confused. Oh, I do like Gordon Mitchell. He's in this. He is a really weird looking character actor guy. Uh, he's in White Fire. Body double uh, is Craig Wasson, Melanie Griffith. Greg well, do Henry. you see a do you see a man that looked like fucking Bill Maher? Or are they just showing you old people? Kind of, he's just kind of pasty faced guy. Are you yeah. looking at him old or young, Poha? Uh, I don't know. Look at him from the movie. Yeah, yeah. He's I think he's in Creep Show, isn't he? Nah. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Hey, I have a question then. So if you were if you were a if you were a um Friday the thirteenth guy, where did you stand on and where do you stand on uh a nightmare on Elm Street? Um, oh. you know, versus Halloween, you know, obviously Halloween uh, ends just came you know out. What? Honestly, Halloween always seemed a the, little more mild and Friday the thirteenth uh, to me seemed more Yeah, boring. it could be, but Honestly, they're three very different movies. Very, they really very. Are. And Nightmare on you Elm Street. You almost can't Park, compare. Well, and even Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Elm, Friday the Thirteenth doesn't really veer too far from its source material. Friday the Thirteenth completely changes its tone, or not? I'm sorry, Nightmare on Elm Street completely changes its tone by like three. Uh, I think yeah. two. Like <laughs> Dream Warrior. Yeah, yeah. Dream, Dream Warrior. <laughs> well, Dream oh, Warrior. I mean, they just get more co comedic, and then I thought it was four the Dream Warriors or is three. Yeah, Dream no, Warriors? three is Dream Warrior. Um, okay. um uh, to me, that one is almost like it might as well be a Marvel movie or something. I mean, it's like a. Kind um, of, yeah. It's no, it's like Dun. You, you remember the cartoon Dungeon and Dragon? Yes. It's like that, but if horror with horror. I, I remember reading the novelization of it actually as a kid even. Oh he remember when the guy goes, I'm the dungeon master or whatever and he tries to <laughs> yeah. and then and he's Freddy's all... like Freddy's like fuck out of here. Yeah, like, yeah, get the fuck out of your nerd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the chick the chick who's who's gonna be badass and lift weights and she turns into Oh yeah, and he puts heroin. He puts heroin needles in her arm. You remember the, her track oh, marks, yeah, 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 yeah. Her track that, marks start being coming mouth, and they like feed me kind of thing. And then he puts heroin needles in her fucking arms. And then the black guy is like a brooch. He's like a big galooch. He's strong, but, like Hulk. But there, there's a, or maybe it's part four where there's the chick who's the weight who likes to lift weights and work out, and she gets turned into a cockroach. That's in that's Dream Warrior. I don't know if I okay. saw that one. That's in it, Dream it's, Warrior. It's, it's it's. I mean, it's got Dockin. As, yeah, uh, as wait. The theme really? song, so, nice. you know. In in Dream Wire, when he turned into a hoach, when he turned her into a hoach and she's yes, crying yes. and she, then then he does like a cheap gag where he she gets into a, like a hoach motel and he goes, oh, they check right. in, but they don't check out. Mm, <laughs> can I, so... Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. It gets ridiculous. And it's like a cartoon. He's like but, the crypt keeper. keeper. Exactly. Yes, kind exactly. Of, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. And people really, they, they fit into it and they like it. And, you know, I'm going to get hate, I'm sure, for shitting on that type of Freddy. And it's entertaining in its own sense. I agree. But Freddy, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1, terrifying film. Part yeah. 2 is also actually pretty freaking messed up and weird. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. the thing about Freddy also is that 
from part one, there's not a mistaken identity. There's not a wrongfully killed. It's not Cropsy where they accidentally burn him and then he has to go and kill Jason Alexander and all the kids and on the on the raft and all that. It's or it's not, it's not, it's not Jason either, where he's like the deformed kid that they thought it'd be funny to mess with. Freddy's a pedophile. He rapes children, kills them, and burns them. So he's the burned them because he burned the evidence. Without yes, us. yes, exactly. Yeah. So Nightmare on Elm Street one, terribly, uh, very, very frightening film. Well done. Although I, I, I did kind of find it funny when he gets out of the dreams, he's blasting with a sledgehammer and he's like oh he just gets it <laughs> yo wait did, you know what for for the first time i found out i was watching something maybe on instagram uh, they showed a clip of um west craven talking about uh friday mm -hmm. and he said the whole he's in why he came up with that is is there was a, a a thing he used to live i think he grew up in baltimore or something like that he was on the second floor they lived on the second floor, okay? And then he, late at night, he heard some shit outside and he looks outside and he sees a man wearing a fucking hat like that and wearing a sweater like that, okay? He says that the guy looks up and stares at him just still like that. And he said he was so fucking terrified and he like, he, he closed the fucking curtains and he's a little kid, okay? He closed the mm -hmm. curtains and he's like, He's like heart beating, whatever, whatever. And he gives it some time, you know, like, like just let him go away. Mm -hmm. He wakes enough time to where he thinks to himself, okay, he has to be gone by now. Mm -hmm. He opens the fucking blinds like that. The fucking guy is still there. And then he like lean to him and look at it and look, look at him even closer. And then he sees the guy go toward the door, the front door of his building. <sighs> <clears throat> he hears the fucking door opening or whatever, That's and then someone walking up. So his brother was much older than him, and he's telling like his mom and his brother. His brother goes out with a baseball bat, hunts down there looking for the guy. They never see the guy again, whatever. He said that his whole life, he, he could never get that experience out of his head. And that was the, he created the tail. That was the jump off for him. Like, what would that guy, what would his story be? You know, like, and, 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 and the fact that he had nightmares about the fucking guy, like that it haunted him for this long. I mean, the, it was interesting. I never knew that my whole yeah, life. No, I, mean, it sounds, I mean, the first Freddy movie and even the second Freddy movie, he's, he's supposed to, it, they're supposed to be scary yeah. movies. Yeah. Three, yeah. four, all that other stuff. It's kind of jump scare stuff, really. Just and having fun. Their, they're having more fun. Stuff. And yeah, Michael yeah. Myers is really, is, is supposed to be more of a psychological terror than say the uh like oh, creature horror elements yeah. of right, uh, Jason. Right. Yeah, that was my money. To turn, yeah, they tried to turn it, Michael Myers into Jason. Yeah, too, you know, Jason. True. Right, 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 right. For, did for, you well go ahead, Tanata. For for my money, out of the three of those franchises, at least if you just take in the first movie. Halloween scares me to this day more than any of those stuff because it's more based in reality. I feel like it's just a serial killer. You know what I mean? Like, like mm. it, even though it's a little fantastical, a little bit, but it that, also that dead expression of that fucking mask. Yeah. It, 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 there's something unsettling about that, and the music. Well, yeah. Oh God, are you? The yeah, there's more mystery in it actually. There's no, there's yeah. no, there is some mystery in Friday the Thirteenth Part One, but that doesn't really involve Jason much. Uh, yeah. Of the three firsts, I think it's a pretty good fight between Nightmare on Elm Street one and and Halloween. But yeah, Halloween yeah. is the better movie overall. Um, yeah. uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part One isn't a bad film either. It's actually pretty good. But and, and it's got the twist ending, so to speak. But right. it, it's not as good. That as ending it. to this day is one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my <laughs> fucking life. It is. That 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 that. that, that, that to this day, when I watch, I'll, I'll watch that just to scare myself because no, I, well, yeah. I'm like, I put it on, I'm like, <laughs> but I, I'm like, I'm like, it's like when I watch Jaws. I love that movie, yeah. but I hate it because it makes me afraid of the fucking ocean. But I'm like, here we fucking go now. And I'm like, and I, you know what I mean? But I want to see it, but I don't want to see it. But you don't want to see it. Doll dies. Doll dies. That, that, oh. Yeah, yeah. Halloween. Cold, lifeless. Seems so like, good. like it. 
Yeah. I just think it too. It seemed like, um, yeah, it was just like uh, kind of mellow the vibe of that movie too. And I feel like it was just so. Wait, which one? Halloween. Like, yeah, that first Halloween, I kind of remember that one more, you know, but I do remember the end of Friday the 13th and stuff like that. I think, I mean, uh, uh, of, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I liked the Nightmare on Elm Street movies as much. I think I liked the ones I don't that believe were... that someone could be beheaded with an oar, though. That, what? you know, Friday the 13th, well, part one. I'm like, I don't know that you could swing an oar heavy enough. Maybe to take not, a but I will say off. this. I still don't That's think not... it's stupid. That's not I won't a, that's say Candyman. I won't say Candyman three times into the movie. Can I tell you Ooh. something? Candyman, 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 Candyman. Candyman, the first ah, one. God, are you? Uh, the first Wait, there's one. a black gentleman outside. God, are you? Wait. <laughs> it's just a mirror. No. Oh. I'm a light-skinned gentleman. Uh, 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 Candyman is dark. I would be hey, down, Tony, Tony Todd is... Is uh is he's he's the dark skinned brother. That's Listen, I used to go to the Y. I used to every time I was in the sauna, I would see him laying there like stretching the fuck out, like like Hick James, like why don't I stretch out? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. he's just like you know, fuck with me and I I'll fill your mouth full of bees. I saw. Yeah. Oh, here, now, first Candy mouth. Man, I didn't know really what to expect, and I was, I thought the tension, the the, the I. That was a scary movie. That was a, well done. I know. It is well so done. Too. I think it was really well done because I think that what I liked about it, it wasn't like, it wasn't done as like a horror movie. I don't know. I felt like it was done as a drama that happened to be sort of a horror movie drama. I don't know. It just didn't feel, it, it felt like elevated in terms of the form. Well, that like, stuff ends up being scary. Not as good as like scarier. Angel Heart or something like that. Like I love yeah. Angel Heart and obviously Hanato, we've talked about that, but like there are yeah. some of those kind of, yeah, like the scary movies that, are a little bit of a notch like elevated who, who from did, who, who directed angel heart was that um, for alan parker oh okay um well craven though you've got last house on the left you've got so, uh you know, my friend Nightmare is in that Street. movie garrett oh, is really? in uh oh no the uh yeah the last house on the left garrett, you're talking about like the newer version though the newer not the version old... garrett my, uh, my buddy uh, garrett is the is the bad guy he's the killer oh no shit oh yeah, I've is it Wes Craven again? Seen the remake. In, in the newer one, and so and the funny thing is, I remember going to the premiere and I was sitting there with him, and he's there like raping this girl. I'm like, "Gee, dude, what?" And he's like, he nice to work. The actor, the actress's like parents, and he's like, "Yeah, hi, I'm I'm Garrett." You know, like, uh, "Hey, how you doing?" Like, you just watch me totally attack your daughter, and you know, like, yeah, it's yeah. Creepy, but, I mean, look, that movie when Garrett, it came out was pretty harrowing stuff. Yeah, uh, and when you, you know, and then the Italians go and do a, a, a copy of it, or they basically try to call it like a, like a, a sequel last, last house at the edge of the park. Right. Oh, and then watch them crank it up to 11. Wasn't, right, wasn't this, I speed on your grave, like a similar thing. So this yeah, is, this, yeah, 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 right. I think so. Maybe right. I right, speed right, on yeah. your grave. Tui. Grave. Well, here, real quick, before you go into the next subject, the, the movies when I was a little kid that scared me the most, I had the opposite stuff from Josh uh, Barnett where, his pe where he wasn't supposed to watch that stuff. My parents would drag me to stuff that I didn't want to see <laughs> because you don't want to get a babysitter or whatever, you know? So yeah. the scariest fucking shit to... Well, I, I exercised these demons in my, in my 30s. <laughs> Uh, okay. about this movie but i did it on purpose i had to do like immersion therapy for myself i saw when i was about five six years old i saw e hazel head oh okay my mommy took me to a friend's house and we watched that shit it, it, and <sighs> e hazel head when you're a child you want to it's like i felt i was instantly i was terrified just like zadas but worse I was instantly <laughs> terrified, but also deeply saddened. You know, like deeply, yeah. de you feel deeply depressed and alone. <laughs> I mean, like immediately. Yes. You know, you're, you feel lost. It's like scarier, <laughs> it's scarier than horror because it's even more, it's existential. It's like, what? <laughs> Where do I fit in to this? Yeah. You know, like, yes. What? What? Yes. What is? What's the meaning of this? You know? yeah. <laughs> and that's scarier than getting killed. Why is it not a baby? What the hell is going on? Yes. David Lynch yeah. is not for the kids, like Wu Chang no. Clan. No. You no. Know? No. And and, no. and so that. But then the other one other thing, and this wasn't my parents doing. This was my own fouch. But I would watch on cable 
on HBO, they used to show um, that fucking movie, Pink Floyd, The Wow. Oh, that's also Yeah, a well, it's funny. I've been telling my kid about that. I want her to uh, see it because I, she, she's- Yeah, like she's old enough. Well, yeah, she's 16 now, but she also, she's an animator and like she's into it. And I'm like, well, that movie's so cool. And like, we'll be driving around. We'll hear some of the music. The other day, what did we hear? Like, um- uh, uh, comfortably numb or, or I don't know something, but I'm just like, oh, okay. You know, I'm like telling her like, she's got to see the wall, you know, she's got to see the wall. However, oh. when you 16 is one thing, but when you're like a fucking, yeah. a glorified yeah. toddler, you know, no, 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 seven, no, that's too that, that's too the, the, I'm watching the, the, the people walking it's on the, the conveyor it's the brick in, right. It's the brick yeah. in the wall. It's the parts with brick in the wall and yes. you have kids on a conveyor belt yes. and they're going, we don't need no, and, and then they're going on, the, and you don't know what's gonna happen. They just like they just like zombies going down the conveyor belt, and then I don't know why this fucked me up so much. But then when you see where they're going down into, they're going into a meat grinder, yeah. and then what's coming out is sauce, sausages, soil yes. green. Yeah, and it's ironic yeah, no. because now I'm slang, I'm embraced that I'm slang sausage. I provide the sausage now, <laughs> yeah. but back hot, then, hot, hot yeah. Italian. Oh, hot, yeah, hot, <laughs> hot African. Oh my God, hot. No, that, that, that 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 bit fucked me up as a kid too when I saw that. And uh, to add mm. to parents thinking they can get away with uh, kids falling asleep, you know, I never saw any horror movies that way. But my, they used to take my sister when she was a kid to the drive-in, but she'd always fall asleep after the first mm. movie, so no big deal. They'd, the second movie would always be the R-rated or whatever. Yeah. I stayed up through all of it, and I very, very, very. Uh, 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 distinctly remember Deal of the Century. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Chevy J. Gregory Hines and Gregory yeah, Hines. And, 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 yeah, Gregory Hines and Chevy J. Yes, yes, Gregory yes. Hines as, as arms dealers, and he comes upon this dude who fucked him over, and the guy's got a bought a brand new Porsche, and he whips out this flamethrower. He's like, let me give yeah. a little touch up, just a little touch up, and he just starts yeah. getting it with the flamethrower. Yes. And there's tits and all and cocaine and all kinds. It's of very shit. broad. It's like, coke. It's it's got the same. Sleep? Yeah, it's got the same tone as like Doctor Detroit or some shit like that. Doctor Detroit. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I will say there's only there's one movie, and I think I, nah. I remember seeing it originally. The doctor. <laughs> and the remember like, how is that Dan Aykroyd? Um, but so there was the on one, the one movie that was so weird to me, and then I think I tried to watch it again, and it still freaked me out. Was a Clockwork Orange. I don't oh, like it. That's an like, intense I don't film. Like listen, it. I think what listen. I think that's what I determined is I don't like it. It freaks me out, and I don't like it. It's it should if it didn't freak you out, you have something fucking. You have a screw loose in your fucking head. That movie yeah, is intense on, on purpose. That shit's crazy. Everything about it's intense. The whole yeah. everything about the start of it's intense to see the the state of society, and then to see uh, as it continues to ramp up, and then now they're taking the guy who's an absolute pile of shit terrible human being and now you're just they're just the shit that they do to him and you're like well, oh, well how am i supposed to feel about all this and the whole end of the movie they just zoom in and he's just got this demonic look in his face and you're like uh is he cured is he i don't this is this movie's a, yeah it is an incredibly intense film oh yeah. you know what just shot in my head about that i just learned this i think uh, two days ago or something like that i think listening to a podcast i was listening to the same one <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm not sure. What did you find out? Because I'll tell you about what I found out. The book. The book no, is okay, so this is different. Yeah. Okay. This is from a this is from I think that Tarantino one I was telling you about. So I'm okay. not sure if you listened to that. This will okay. fucking trip you out. Oh, and you'll love it for a couple of reasons. So this was already in motion. There was um I don't I don't know how far along they already were, but uh, Mick Jagger was cast as the lead and his band of goons, whatever they call those fucking guys. Drews. The Drews was the band, was the Holling Stones. <clears throat> and oh, then so I that... think, and then so I think that what happened was like the manager or something said, you know what, we can't do this. Like this is gonna fuck up the Golden Goose. This is gonna kill. But there was in place to do this shit. Hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah, no, look it up. Look it up if you don't believe that's that one. That's crazy. It's yeah, crazy I to mean, me, too. That's why I brought it up. That's pretty wild. Although, yeah. I didn't expect you to pick a Clockwork Orange as, to, as an example of like, oh, you know, strangely scary, unsettling movie. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a, funny enough. That one was unsettling. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's called a clockwork laranja. So obviously, like, 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 clockwork like, laranja. Like, like crazy uh, movie. I do have a movie that uh, scared the shit out of me as like a 12, 13 year old, because I would always watch tons of Cinemax. They'd always do the yeah. uh, Summer of a Thousand movies, and I'd probably watch 850 of them, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, there was this, and this movie don't hold up. I don't think it will scare anyone. It was called I Madman, and it was about a person reading a novel. And the actual killer in the novel would show up and kill people. Oh, but God. there was something about it's the like idea that that sounds like well, kind of like the death note. Kind of. Right? Well, you didn't have to. You didn't write their names down. It's just as okay. this person keeps reading the book, the killer slits people up with a straight razor. Uh -oh. And uh, um, but he wasn't a pimp. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, and, and I, it was just it, it, it actually scared me kind of in the same way that ne the neon maniacs scared me, and that was that it just seemed as if like w with this book guy he just it didn't even matter if you weren't reading the book your ass might get killed from someone else reading it and you ain't getting away from it like there oh, was no, no way to, it was just and so something about that inability to have like if you didn't want to get killed by jason like don't show up at camp crystal lake right, but right. this this reading the book thing like oh you're just fucked cuz and it was just also kind of like how that in some way like the Neon Manix is not a scary movie by any means. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that they had made sequels and there was so much on. Uh, just Google that movie. The we saw it. The whole thing is nuts. Yeah. We watched yeah. it one Halloween for my old yes. podcast yes. and we fucking was laughing. That was, that was, I had, that was a blast. But the, the thing about that movie that scared me was unlike a lot of the other you know, like uh, supernatural or killer tropes in these horror films. These motherfuckers had no boundary, and they're just right in the middle of New York, San Francisco. We'll chase you down on public transit. We'll kind of murder if they're coming after you. You yeah. can't just they'll they only take off because if it turns daylight or if it's gonna rain. Okay, that's okay. it. Oh, if it's you, gonna rain. That's it. <laughs> yeah, if it's gonna rain. But that's then it. Like, like, uh, uh, yeah, you know, like in other yeah. movies, like oh, they're all black. Like, oh, no. They're all black yeah. women. Oh, I thought I <laughs> they don't, they yeah. don't want their. I don't know why they just got that ship. They just got that perm done, yeah. and they spent a lot the of money on it. Yeah. Got that pressed. Yeah, oh, no. don't want all that. Don't, don't touch all, my hair. Don't want the uh, you know, all the uh, the ingredients to come out. You know, all the relaxer to get. No, nah, that's them ingredients. <laughs> nah, them <laughs> ingredients. Relaxer. <laughs> yeah, that's that hila. That <clears throat> that hila. <laughs> Listen, listen, Josh. On the on the flip side, do you listen? Is there certain metal music you listen to around Halloween? Like, is there? <laughs> is there I'm so, it's Halloween. It's time to <laughs> dust dust off Saxon or whatever. <laughs> yeah, dust off. Like, are there certain? No. Like, are is there is there a time denim and leather? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if metal is as good in the summertime no. as it is at this time of year. It's good every like time. No, it's good all the time. Hey, cruising is what you watch when you want to listen to Saxon. Oh. You're like, ah, oh. no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, man. Al Pacino just dancing yeah. like that and sweating his fucking face off. <laughs> like, Emil Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what about you to water sports? No, they take the fucking handkerchief off. <laughs> of seen, there's a, it's it's got to be on a, uh, on a, uh, uh, fucking youtube someone made a gag uh like yeah a i sent it to you i, I yeah, i'm the we, one who said what is it, it's what is a, it it's, <laughs> uh, okay so someone losing cut to something else check this out no, they, no. they used to you remember those like the, when we was like in the 80s and 70s 80s they used to have like toy haste tracks you know like you put your car and it goes you know it's like okay someone made like a perfect where it almost like I showed it to somebody. They thought it was a heel commercial. They go, they did, <laughs> they made that, and basically it was like the cruising playset or whatever, and it, it it was like straight from the hit movie with Al Pacino trolling, you know, about the trolling for 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 hot young men in for the leather community. Know, no, cruising timeout for people who don't yeah. know. Al Pacino's a policeman who goes undercover in the gay men's clubs in the, in like the seventy or in, in the, the heavy leather. The yeah, the meat, meat pack, the it's meat like, packing yeah, dish. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Judas Priest. It's like, uh, oh, Rob yeah, Halford. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rob Halford. It's like that kind of hardcore and like leather, like, like 
Cru- and so Cruz, yeah. you're like, oh, it, it's a cool Pacino movie. Just know what you're getting because it's not. Yeah, and the bar, yeah. the bar is like called the Eagle's Nest. You know, and you dance with a guy like holding his, like hard, doing, a, like, doing hard, like the, the predator handshake. You're like, <laughs> and you got jeans and no shirts. Oh, God, are you? Hey, what, what a chime. What a, ch- what a chime. Pacino looks hot in that movie. Like he's hot in it. He's like, the boys oh. are hot in that movie. He's old he's Pacino. Like, he's just sweating like the whole time. He's just like, coke sweats. Watching that, it's just like, look at all these hot dudes. Like, it's well, like, he's pre, he's pre, he's pre hua Pacino. <laughs> he's like, I want to go undercover in the leather daddy scene. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? He sounds like uh, fucking Michael Carleone. Right, 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 or whatever, right. you know. But it's before um, Attica or after Dog Day Afternoon? It's after Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, it's after. after. After no. I love Dog Day. What that's that's maybe my favorite Pacino performance aside from Glenn that. Gary Glenn Haas. But 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 um we digress. Oh, yeah, the oh, cruise cool. in playset, the cruise in playset. Cruise and and, and you you can get busted by the cops. You gotta check to see yeah. if the right handkerchiefs and, out on the top yeah. of the building. You, you, it goes like this, it goes, check the hanky code, and the kids are like <laughs> And then and then it goes like this. It goes lock up. He goes, "There's the handsome stranger." And you, you're in a um, you're in a like a a, a van thing that's on the track. Yes. And it goes like this. It goes, "You see the hand? There's the handsome stranger." And it goes, "Now lock eyes." And then the kid presses something, and like like the head eyes comes out of the thing. And then the other guy has head eyes, and it goes it goes like this. It goes, "Okay, now make the block or whatever." And then, like so, it goes like. Like to, to to you know to go hound one more yeah, time and then come. Yeah. So it goes now. Make the block. <laughs> I gotta see this. That you you gotta hit the button to stop the to stop the you, band at the right time. You won't believe it. You won't be fucking. Be- I mean, really if you've seen cruising movie. and you like cruising, it, it's like you pissing yourself laughing. It, like the fact that someone made that, crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. That's. I mean, that sounds crazy. It totally sounds yeah. crazy. Oh, and at the end it goes assembly required. Uh, your two dads. Put it together. I would... <laughs> nice. Nice. I did um, just show a yeah. uh, uh, bowel to my girlfriend who knew Tim and Eric's. Oh, bowel, the bowel. Never, yeah. I've never seen. <laughs> I don't know if she's hit. I don't know if this one is hit to, to um, um, Tim and Eric, but I had a little bit of uh, Chahiki. Yeah. So I'm going to oh. take a piss. I'm going to drain the main vein, as they say, to put it yeah, mildly. You go do that. You go okay. I introduce you Mr. Thick Dick to Mr. Urinal Cake. Exactly. I'm gonna water the parcel as they say all kind of like. Wow. Hey, I was so making listen- a great outdoors reference since we were talking about <laughs> Aykroyd earlier. Another Dan Aykroyd movie, am I right? Isn't that Dan Aykroyd? Look at all the maggots on that meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, so listen, um, are you currently uh I think what did you just put out um a video where you were doing some uh some different holds were you doing some pro uh some some pro wrestling holds and stuff like that like what are uh, you up to these days in terms of like are you training people are you like what what are you up to uh, you know i usually when i'm on set i take my mic off when i go into the bathroom i was just gonna say well let me try you something a big sound come down from bobby perhu <laughs> it's almost like like you're uh like you're diving off the top of that structure in Watts. That, that's, <laughs> that's true. But when, you, nope. but when you hit the streets, <laughs> oh, you, know. you know, me and uh, Bernie Kesty have something in common, <laughs> and it's not, uh, and it's not our hairstyle. <laughs> uh, uh, also, uh, I was in the Friday the Thirteenth Part Three barn for that movie that I did oh, with Michael shit. Jai White. And that's yeah. supposed to be where he meets up with uh, his his gang before he, uh, further early on in the movie is me, Michael Madsen. Um, uh, uh, I'm forgetting everybody else's name. I'm sorry, guys. And uh, I remember going there for the set. That's the hideout, right? I'm yeah. looking at it and I go, Wait oh, a I know what this is. I know exactly what the fuck this is. That's where the black girl comes out on the and she's like hanging from the thing uh, where the where the where the hay bales come out at the top, and there's where the guy is stuck with the pitchfork in the wall. I go, this is the Friday the Thirteenth Part Three barn. Yeah, that gang is so cheap in that movie. Not is, not man. in Black Dynamite, but the gang in in, in Part Three. Oh, poor. Huh? Hey, it's that- uh. You know, I don't know this. Someone who's watching, or or you might, Hanach, oh, uh, wow. did uh 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 Tom. Uh, Savini, did, was he one of the gang's guys in part three? 
Oh, I don't wait. Who is Charmy Savini? He's the uh, well, he's the guy with the with the crotch uh, gun in uh, 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 Robert Rodriguez's vampire flick. Um, oh, what is that movie I, called I, again? Oh, the oh, the, one, oh, the Texas um, movie. The, yeah, that's yeah, till dawn. And, um, yeah, from dusk till dawn. He's the guy that has the the pistols on his crotch. Oh, Fox, yeah, 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 yeah. He also is in uh, uh and talk, talk about incredibly boring movies that I really wanted to enjoy. <laughs> uh, Night Riders with Ed Harris. Oh, you mean where they like from the, they like from uh, the 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 um don't tell me mm -hmm. that like Renaissance Fair. Yes, you mean and they do jousting yeah. on motorcycles. Yeah, and it, he's all talking it's about Night Hiders. Night Hiders like with yeah. a K, K, and it's like K. somehow it's. Imagine the, the pitch, it's cocaine fueled shit. It's, the pitch is like, <laughs> hey, these guys is like at the Renaissance Fair, but it's a motorcycle gang. And then they fight each other, but with old night stuff, but on modern motorcycle, it don't make any question, fucking sense. Who's the audience? Me. Uh, and, and just what <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, Also, it was, uh, it was the, the movie Romero, I think, made right after Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, plus, you know how they used to get you? The same way that they used to get you with, like, pulp novels and garbage trash novels. The, the fucking artwork, they would get, like, Frank Farzada or someone like that. So the artwork on the fucking front is like, yo, oh, God, oh, you, you know what I mean? You see yeah. this shit, you, it's got the night and the fucking thing. Or, like, what's another one? You remember the movie Deathstalker? Oh, uh, but those, the, the Deathstalker one and two, Deathstalker one's actually really I'm just really saying. Good. But the yes, poster, the artwork is insane. That, yes, these look like an A-list movie. It looked like oh my fucking god! And then when you see it, you're like, it looked like it was filmed <laughs> where they did with with the barn and the fucking thing he was I, talking I think, about. Uh, you know? The Death Stalker covers are uh, Boris Vallejo. Yeah, uh, which one, with yeah, that but super the muscular. The Death Stalker yeah. one uh, is actually really good for what it is. Really oh, interesting of course, for what Number it is. Two, but Number yeah. two is hilarious. So they did it in, I'm in sure. a satirical way. But uh, also the cover for Sword and the Sorcerer is pretty badass too. I and used to own that movie. That's I a love good movie. That's a good, that. I that was one of my favorite where he shoot Sword and the Sorcerer. He had the sword looked like a Conan sword, a heavy three, <laughs> but blades. three blades. But and he could he shoot did. one out at you. Yeah. yeah and so he had the two on the side. But it would fly like cockamamie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. It would go. Wah. Yeah. And, and, and Richard. Richard Who was the fucking plays hero? A demon sorcerer. Oh, yeah, and he the hero. He, I forget his name. Yeah, but he checks him. Uh, kills it in that he, though. He checks out. In, hide off the bat. The very beginning, he come out of like a bath of blood, and he checks yeah. a Jamaican woman's heart out her chest like that. Oh God, <laughs> yes, are you? It's exactly. Yeah. The so that Dominican girl's heart right out. Yeah, a mercenary. With, wait, I. For those who don't know, the sword and the sorcerer. It, it says. A mercenary with a three-bladed sword rediscovers his royal heritage's dangerous future when he's recruited to help a princess foil the designs of a brutal tyrant and a powerful sorcerer in conquering a land. The sorcerer was very is cool. Richard Maul, and he really Maul. does kill everyone uh, on, in, in any scene he's with. He it's dominates. Lee, and Lee Richard Horsley. Lynch is no lightweight either. Lee Horsley. Lee Horsley, yes. Oh! From... from Oh show. shit! Not the TV show, show um, that was Matt like Landon. Magnum PI. It was oh, like yes, Magnum. Yes. Matt Houston. Matt Houston. Yes. Houston. Yes. Yo, he looked like it was like a cheap. It was like a Magnum PI knockoff, but he had like a he fucking was western hat. Late too, and Django and Change. He was in the fucking hateful, eh? Wow. Because he was in the hateful eight and Django. Yeah, and Lee Horsley. Um. Yeah, Richard Maul, uh, the best performance, I think, in the movie. Yeah, he, you know, he's really good in it. He's yeah, really Matt good in that movie. Good. I mean, I'm not saying it for B-movies. I mean, Richard Maul slays in that fucking film. Like, oh, he's, yeah. And, I mean, you and know Lynch, who, he, Lynch is great, too. Richard Lynch, who's always he, good. He, uh, um, Maul is, um, is, is, is Bull from Night Court. Bull Shannon from yeah, Night Court, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, And then Lee Horsley's character is like Eagle or Striker. He's, got, he's like, so some, dope. You know, he has that vibe like like Snake Plissken or like, you know, like yeah. Han Solo. Like, listen, lady, uh, shut up or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that kind and of he's stuff. He's got his, his secret dagger that shoots out of his, his, yeah, out of his fucking thing. gauntlet. Or, or his, uh, but <laughs> yeah. but him, him as the kid, though, you're like, wait a second. Oh, this yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you have like a longer hair. 
He did, but no, I mean, he had long hair in the movie, but him as a child looks like he's like this chubby kind of, it's just like this kid ain't getting away from anything. You know who I'm confusing? I just mm-hmm. saw the kid from Conan, the Barbarian. You know when he witnessed his parents die? Oh, yes. That's what I was confusing. The image I was seeing oh, no, is no, that no. kid. That kid looks good, like it could be Conan. Uh, the hey, kid that supposedly grows kid. up into Lee Horsley, you're like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> you're like, that's no Matt Houston for her. Yeah. No, definitely not. Uh, Boy, did I love, I used to love. The that worst. and Beastmaster was like, oh, was yeah. like on heavy hook. Oh, great. That's the uh, uh, same guy that did Phantasm, though, also. That's uh, Don oh. Cascarelli. Oscar yeah, because there's some scary shit in that fucking. In, there in, is. In I, I see. My problem was, I did think the Beastmaster was cool, and I was all right with Hamill. It was interesting, Rip Torn playing the evil wizard. That was. Mwah. But uh, oh, I want your Hulk. children. He's and, and, uh, uh, Amos. Actor to me. Oh, Amos. John Amos. John Amos was he was the, was the like Running with a pony chair. Cloth in a yeah, with his cheeks, with with his cheeks hanging yeah. out. He goes, it's "Nah, that ain't no slave girl, now." Nah. <laughs> yeah. had some good times for people who don't know yeah no uh, uh, i thought you was telling oh, us yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. but, yeah, but uh, now that ain't I no can't... slave girl huh? <laughs> i was unfortunately unfortunately i don't know to for whom who knows uh i wanted the jun horde to win because they were so fucking cool looking and they didn't no one spoke they all had crazy yeah but they had no mercy leather no. yeah because they, they look no. like hob halford you was into that shit yeah, well, and then also there were the Berserker what? guys. I thought it was kind of stupid. In... Yes, they put the weird go- yeah. uh, glowing green thing in the ear, and then they start yeah. freaking out, and they put the mask yeah. on them. They're just covered in spikes. And then I'm like, how the hell is a little weasel going to outsmart these crazy monsters? Because that's Cordo and Porto. From... That's his thieves or whatever. These are my thieves. <laughs> but um, I like the ones who go like this. Oh, carajo. That was scary. You know, those uh, ones who, like, put you into... Yeah, that scared like, me when I was a kid. Yeah, um, the weird bat people get to beat the cool guys with the with the Mad Max. <laughs> that shit was fantastic. I mean, worst I, movie I remember... by the way. Worst movie for uh, one of the one of the absolute worst for cover art, completely fucking you over. The Iron Master. The cover. Look this up. Here, I don't know if Iron I know Master. that one. It it the cover looks like the, possibly the coolest fucking movie you might ever find. There's yeah, a dude I mean, it's in easy. like crazy plate mail with a giant fucking sword and an incredibly hot chick right at the at the heels and and the sunlight is coming from behind him. He can't even see his face. The whole movie is about a bunch of shitty cavemen who find like a piece of iron and he it's just starts whacking master? people. Iron Master. Okay, well, because this is like some what? some bougie black and white movie. Hold on. Let me, oh, no. oh, Iron Master. I thought you were about to say it's a bougie oh, black oh, movie oh, oh, or whatever. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, wait. But, Ooh la la. Hold on. Be still my heart. Is that, is that Kyle McLaughlin? Wait, I was just... <laughs> I Is that Kyle McLaughlin in a weird hold fucking on, way? Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. But the it cover art... 4. 6. Wait, wait. Oh, it's oh, Sam terrible. Pasco. Sam Pasco. Hold on. Now my camera won't focus. It needs to reset. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Is that my eyes or is that you? No, 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 no. It's because I You got to quit my... using the Instagram filters. Well, at least no, he was... because I put the... Hold on. It's because yeah. I put the... Um, the, the Video Kyle McGlock. The uh, oh, hold on. I'll tell you what. I'll be right. Oh, there it is. Oh no, there you go. It's, there you go. Yeah, because it had to. It was. It was messed up on where the uh, focal point was. It, it, it saw how thing. gorgeous Kyle McGlock was, and then it was like, oh, what's this? It didn't know that how was... to 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 process. God, it just needed more white balance, <laughs> I guess. Right. <laughs> it needed more light skin balance. No, you look gorgeous. <laughs> you look gorgeous. I'm just jealous. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, wait. What yeah, was so the, the lead fu- guy's name? Is Sam Pasco. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's probably like a fake name for some Italian dude, <laughs> right? Yeah, Sam Pasco. Yeah, like there's nobody, George Eastman, like there's nobody. Oh, George like, Eastman was in everything, he George played Eastman. the main monster in uh, Anthropophagus. And uh, what about Anthropophagus? Scott, are you um, <laughs> Barnett? You know what? I used to uh, speaking of of, of Beast Mash, I remember <laughs> I, I, is this I about love masturbation, or is this about well, taming the snake? Similar, it's about two guys <laughs> coming together because what, <laughs> when they when they make peace with each other, when him and John Amos and they go, you know, I'll I'll travel with you or whatever, and they do that handshake that's like this. Yes, yes. I afterwards in in, in grammar school we was doing that show. It was like I 
I respect you, my brother. <laughs> you know, <I> and <laughs> we thought that shit was hard, you know, because it feels even more manly than a handshake. You're like, to the, to the death or whatever. You know what I mean? Like a blood brother. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it was important. Glory on your adventure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, but you had—that's when you had imagination. Like when you oh, was a kid, when you was a kid, you thought there was still magic left. Like I remember when I was on the train, and the train was about to came into the stage, I would like take the the pole and start going <clears throat> like I was the Hulk. And I, or like Hercules, and I was the one like stopping it, you know, because, and then you hear the brakes going, and like you can imagine the sparks or whatever. I, I, I mean, you're making everything a wonderland just out of I nothing. Still do you do know? that with an elevator door sometimes. You're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, shit like that. <laughs> you're, you're pulling it closed or whatever, like opening yeah. it. Yeah. Hanach, did you send yeah. me the, or did I send you the clip of, I guess it's the end of this Hercules movie, where all of a sudden Hercules fights some guy yeah. in the stars. Yeah, after <laughs> yeah because I told you, I took... I told you, I took a fucking... I went, I asked out a grown woman that I had a crush on. To the move to a date, and because she felt she, she thought I was a sweetheart or whatever, she actually and my parents let this happen. She took me to the fucking see Hercules with Lou Fahigna, and we went into the movies. And she was like a light skin. She was like a Karen Branch type. She was like a light skinned black woman, but oh, wow. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. like, um, unbelievable. Um, but. What the fuck was the point of that? Yeah, so I saw that in, in the idea. Of I saw that in the fucking theater. Lost in that idea. <laughs> funny <laughs> thing is, my think of anything further. Exactly. But funny thing is, my dumbass at that age, I must have been. When did that fucking movie come out? I must have been. Uh, like like seventy nine. No, no, no. It came out. Of, it, it was in the early eighty. Maybe let's say I was eight years old or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Here, this is like a twenty-one year old woman or whatever. I'm thinking that. She's accept the date. That means she's interest. Do you understand? So I'm thinking like, okay, afterward, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, yeah. the, I think something's gonna, you know, happen. Hold and hands, then I, you know, yeah. And then I started to realize I was like, this is like a mercy killing. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> you know. But I was trying. I'm like talking. I'm always like, wow. So um, that Lufa Higno. I and mean, the seed it, of resentment towards women was planted. No, no, I was, you know what? I don't look at it that way. I was sharpening my thine sword or whatever because I was like trying to small talk about the movie afterwards. I'm, you know, like, like from <laughs> Fast Time at Hitchman High, uh, Damon, I was like, hey, Lou for Hickno, huh? Great Hercules or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like trying to talk to her like as if we just saw uh, yeah, uh, Ingmar, like as if we just saw Ingmar Bergman. Deep down inside, you, <laughs> deep down inside huh? you're like, hey, when they turned into laser beams, that was, I like that. That shit was fire. You know, to me, I I, I knew, though, because it I chose the movie. It could have been a scene in Xanadu. It could have been a scene in Xanadu. Xanadu is better than that. But I, <laughs> yeah, for, for, yeah. for me... It could have been a scene in Zalvez or whatever the hell. Like Zardoz. Zardoz. Oh, God, are you? Uh, Xanadu, when I was a kid, I had a crush on that fucking girl. But he did. I know, but I'm just saying, you think you're the only one when you're that age. You know, like, you see you see Jodie Foster in fucking Tom Sawyer, the movie or whatever, and you're like, oh, God, are you? Oh, I remember it had to be. Uh, yeah. It was um, little foxes. Uh, the, the main chick from uh, Night of the Comet, and uh, she was also in the Last Starfighter. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know exactly uh, who you're talking about. I don't and, know and her name. There, and then I, I'm forgetting it. I've never known and her then, name, but I know who you're talking then, about. And uh, then, um, uh, freaking labyrinth with uh, uh, oh, oh Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. Um, Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer that's, Connelly. That's, yeah, Jennifer oh, yeah. Connelly. Yeah, Jennifer Connelly. Labyrinth. Requiem for a Dream, who I was just talking to. Who also, to David. yeah, he remember, he, yeah, Keith David, bring it back to David. Keith David. He said, I know it's pretty, but I didn't check it out for air. Take it out for me. Ooh, that's some dark <laughs> stuff. In no more disturbing. ways than one. That yeah. movie is so. It's very disturbing. It's so disturbing. You, you know who was the ultimate, though, when I was a kid? What? Catherine Mary Stewart. That was I had a oh, okay. crush on Catherine Mary okay. Stewart. You know who is the ultimate though? Mm. Wonder Woman. Linda Carter. <laughs> Spinning around. Yeah. Just just wrapping up your feelings and hearts as she goes. Linda Carter and the girl Velma Aaron, uh, from oh, Good Chimes. Okay. From Good Chimes. Oh, I thought the you were older say, sister uh, on Good Chimes. 
Aaron Aaron Gray or Aaron. Yeah, from, uh, she was good too from Buck from Hodges. Rogers. Yeah, yes. in the twenty fifth century. Aaron Gray on Buck Rogers, you're right. She was very cute, but she was no want, Linda Carter. Did you she want was to be no Linda Hawk? Carter? Did you want to be Hawk Kanach? Uh, you mean from from me, um, um, um Spencer Hawk. for hire? No, oh, not wait. that Hawk. Oh, you mean Hawk? Hawk. Oh. Oh God! Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh my God! Well, you know what? I used to love Twinkie. Oh God! Oh, beady, 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 beady. Yeah, beady, 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 beady. Yeah, Buck Hodges hey, on the twenty first. And then there was the there was the uh, older. Said than Spencer the... for Hire though. I used to do extra work on Spencer for Hire in Boston. Oh really? Not in Boston. Was Robert Urich cool? Oh yeah, Robert Urich. Was um, cool. He was so cool, and he was so handsome and everything. That, but yeah, uh, yeah. He was, he was a rugged dude. Yeah. As well, if mom's still in, I don't know. But yeah, we used to do extra work on Spencer for Hire, and I specifically remember like an episode where like they were in a cafe, and like every time it was going to be from Robert Yurk's perspective in this conversation, like there's KB eating her. Ooh. And I totally remember like, the early <laughs> days of shoot night to go, like, go in. We were down by North Station in Boston. Like Spencer for Hire was the jam with Avery. I Hitch. We then went Fuck on to go love and meet a captain in a Star Trek uh, show. So, yeah, it's oh. all good. Yeah, Listen, Robert, you're Spencer a, for uh, hire. played for UNLV, I think. He's football player. No. No shit. How about Yurik is one of those guys that's like a what should have been. Like, first of all. He, he should have been a much bigger star. He should have been Tom Berenger. And then uh, even Tom Berenger didn't became what he should have been. You know what I mean? Like. Oh yeah, his Tom Berenger in Platoon was like, whoa, that dude. Tom Berenger crazy. should have been. We should be talking to about him in like the. Yeah. He should be in the like of the greats, and then it's what like was it, the cop movie where he plays the 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 cop chasing down the he's God. What someone is that? to watch over me or some shit. I think I uh, yeah. And the other, well, because why am I, I'm blanking on? It's like I'm more of an action on, flick, though. The one where he's like looking after that woman or whatever, and they're yes, like in the mountains. Yes. Isn't well, that called all someone I think to watch of over? Him in the big chill. I think of him in the big chill first. Of, of course, and he's like a fake Matt Houston. Yeah, exactly. He, <laughs> yeah. So like, he, right, 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 right. Um, uh, uh, and yeah. and of course, let's not forget Major League. Come on. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I will say, yeah. I mean, we could. <laughs> Okay. But so how about Yurik also in Yurik. Ice Pirates? Tom yes, Yurik. Robert Yurik in Ice Pirates with uh, not Gregory Hines, but I forget that guy's the name. The other fucking dude. Yes, the poor, <laughs> the poor man's Gregory, the poor man's Gregory Hines. Hines. Gregory Hines. Yeah. Yes, and and uh uh uh, fuck. Um, the space harpy. Well, yes, the space harpies. John Matuzak. Uh, it's got uh, God damn it, the the really hilarious uh uh uh. Gay guy Bruce Valanche. Oh, as that fucking one who's trying to like who's trying to fucking look like a lizard or whatever. Wait, no, what no, he's like since now? he's uh you can cut his head off and it doesn't matter because because it gets chopped off by uh by uh why is her name? She's fucking super famous. Man, it has uh, been a on, fucking Valanche. minute. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, because okay, so he's in Zohan. He's in the Ice Pirates. So Ice Pirates also has in the cast. Robert Urich, Mary What's Crosby, black guy? Michael D. Roberts is the poor man's. Is he the poor Gregory man? Hines? Of course. If you you didn't even have to show me, he was the black guy. If your name is Michael <laughs> D. Roberts, you're the black guy. <laughs> that period. Uh, it's a gal from The Witches is in that movie. Angelica uh, Houston. Oh, Angelica Houston. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And she's and a badass. Exactly. She's the one that Bob wants him to. In it too. John Carradine. See, I didn't even know who Han Perlman was back then. That's well, me neither. It. He's in everything, though. That guy's got to be like 80. I, Ice Pirates was one of my favorite. That was when I first learned about Harpy. Because yeah. they had the <laughs> yeah. space Harpy. And right. then I was Please like, I've heard, I remember going, oh, I've heard of Harpy. And then I'm like, wait, a space Harpy? And then I was like, I didn't know a Harpies could be. And then that was like, once I got explained that, I was like, that's fucking funny that they would like... Um, <laughs> I, I I was like kudos to them for coming up with and, and the robots, uh, the robots fighting all the time, and a bunch of them were cowards. He they kick them and they try to yeah. run away and shit. The, that fucking movie's an unsung. That's a un. That's a that's a un underappreciated gem. gem. Underappreciated gem like yeah. Outland. Speaking of Sean Connery, uh, and I'm, it's not a Halloween movie necessarily, but um, but Peter I Yates. Now we've probably done a, a good deep dive. On the film can I wanted to see if there was any questions, Josh, before we let you go. I know we've had you for a while. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait. Oh. Wait, we ain't going you nowhere. Are... No, Dave, jump back, Jack, before your skull is cracked. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't know. I said, 
like I just I said before because last time we talked for a really long time, and I said, okay, Josh, I promise we won't keep you as long this time. So I didn't. No, no, it's it's, it's, not it's, not okay, it's not possible. It's not possible. Never. It's not possible. Listen, I'm not trying to get rid of you. I just didn't want to assume. Listen, when you assume, you make an asshole out of. You, just he's gonna stay now. Okay. For a little well, bit. If, if he's staying, and I'm glad he is. Well, then, Hanato, I'll tell you what, then. Um, Josh, we prepared, uh, Hanato and I, uh, two movies that we wanted to talk about to explain to the people maybe why we love them, uh, why, mm -hmm. you know, they should watch them for Halloween or that type of thing. So, Hanato, let's do yours first. Uh, let me first, uh, let me just get everything ready. Why don't we do yours first? Why don't we do yours first? Perfect. Yeah, well, ladies yeah, first. Ladies first. Okay. Well, the movie that I absolutely love that I want everybody to see is American Werewolf in London. Okay, so listen. Yeah. Great movie. It's a great movie. Um, it came out in the early 80s. It's one of these movies that makes me um, nostalgic for my childhood. And it's in one oh, of those movies him. where it is, it's got a little bit of scary thing. Very clearly, it is about a werewolf. But to me, this movie had everything because it has a love story in it and it had a fun uh, kind of halloween -y horror story type of thing. But the thing that's so fun about it, too, is I, I was just watching it again before this episode. And I like, you know, and I was just in London this summer. So to me, there's a there's a part where um, the, the, the lead guy, you know, he does believe that he gets turned into a werewolf, which spoiler alert, he does, but he's trying to get, <laughs> I don't think that's too much of a spoiler <laughs> <laughs> where he's trying to get arrested and he's running around. And like, since I was just there, it was really fun for me because I'm like, he's in Trafalgar square. He's mm -hmm. over in Piccadilly. He's over this, but it's one of these movies where it's, it's the perfect length to like, for me, if I, I, I oh, the Josh, perfect length. you know, I'm single, I'm single. And it's like, but to me, this would be a perfect date night Halloween movie because it clocks in at like 92 minutes or something. It's not too long. It's, it's, it's like lighthearted. It does like, have a I, decent amount of gore and w at least it, one particularly harrowing scene of yeah. weird Nazi monsters yes. machine gunning the shit out of people. And you're just like, what movie that shit is that shit is a trip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it has a, it has a lot. Um, I don't want to oversell it. It's not a romantic comedy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it has Griffin Dunn in it too. Who it, it's like it's just it's really fun. It has uh, the horror. Movie, as if, the, the, well, the can I say movie. something though, Karen Branch? Of, of course. As if that's a selling point for any other fucking people listening to this. Like by the way, kids. It, by the way, millennials and generation Y or whatever the fuck you are, uh, it has Griffin Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> from from who's that girl? I don't know. No, the horror movie connection there is Griffin Dunn's sister is the one from Poltergeist who was murdered. It's very sad. Oh. But his sister is the one who, uh, remember, if you guys remember, that she, from the original Poltergeist, the older sister in Poltergeist, no, is, is I Dominic, didn't know that. Dominic Dunn. Yes, Dominic wow. Dunn. The no older shit. sister in Poltergeist is Ooh. Griffin Dunn's sister. She was murdered by strangulation. Wow, that, that is, movie was wow. snake bit. That little fucking girl oh. died, too. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. that's a PG movie where people tear their own faces off. That's, yeah, that's, was that's before era. they figured it out. And then Dreamscape yeah. came out and they was like, listen, let's fucking... I know, yeah, Paul <laughs> is crazy. But yeah, so anyway, um, just American Werewolf in London, it's fun. And and listen, um, I still, to this day, it, it literally it was branded in my brain from way early on. Whenever I hear that song, Moon Dance, uh, you know what I mean? That's I think of that scene. There's like... A, I, a, I'll, a, I'll tell you what, yeah. some for some fucking reason... By the way, John Landis is one of my yeah. all time all Ghostbusters, all kinds of great things. I mean, uh, 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 trading places, coming to America, right. Right. Uh, um, uh, Animal House. Right. Uh, I mean, the oh well, that's right. yeah. wow, that's Haley digging in the crash. But <laughs> some of the greatest comedies, my favorite all time comedies, this guy fucking did. And there's a tone to these fucking. Oh, Spies Like Us. Yeah. I yes. mean, there's right. a tone to these fucking movies that, you know what it reminds me of? Mad Magazine. Somehow, yeah. it, or, it, something, the vibe of Mad Magazine, there's a certain flavor, man. But, 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 um, 
what the fuck was the point of that? Uh, uh, oh, you that scene. American Werewolf too. Yeah, you love but that, that right? scene you know, yeah, right. where he's changing. For me, there's something so disturbing about the choice of song. There's something so sad about his transformation that that song is on. I don't know why, but it makes Who it. Who dances on when they're having when they're. Which is the song that's on when he's changing? Like there's a there's a sentimental um 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 like when he's in her apartment and she's not there and he's changing but well <clears throat> well once and one but time he's in the day, a, the, who dances the, when they're having uh, when they have oh them. oh well fuck what's the song that's playing when he's changing he's there's a song mistakes? there's like a song uh, uh, like a song like a uh, uh, um. What the fuck is that guy's name? Um, well, I took pe oh, people want to show. Oh, so here's here's Griffin and this is okay. Yeah. So wait, I gotta I gotta be careful what I show. So here's the beginning of him starting to change. Yeah, it's like there's like a Sam Cooke song or something right. on, and he's and he's uh -huh. sentimental and he, something. And then he's like freaking out because he's like, oh no, I'm turning into a werewolf. And I, oh no, look at my face. I look upset. I'm upset. <laughs> and then, and, and at, then, at the chime, at the chime, nothing like that had ever happened in a movie right. like and the chain. No, like no. And, and again, it's all physical effects, which right, is yeah. right. when they did that stupid American werewolf in Paris, it looked like yeah. a yeah. really shitty movie with, with, with young people and yeah. with like millennials or, or, or yeah. young Gen Xers. And then yeah. some sort of computer game about fucking stupid werewolves running around. It was, it was, yeah. it was, it was it, an embarrassment. Was it Blue Moon? Moon? I, I don't I, it, it, it might have been. And it's, I mean, it's it like, was, a, there was no right, the howling. But they did the physical, like you said, they did the physical thing. They're like his hands changed. He's got so, the hair coming out. It, it's it's cool. But instead of instead of scary music when it's happening, it has the music that he should yeah. be enjoying with the girl and lady, enjoying yeah. life. And there's something that's so scary about the transformation because it's juxtaposed with something that it's almost like he's never gonna be part of the normal mm -hmm. of yeah. this. And it's it, it makes it somehow is it, it was it was scary, but it was also gut henching to me. Mm -hmm. It was like the perfect. It's like a genius choice that he probably had to fight for. Like the studio is probably like, why is that on in the no, back? You know and, what I mean? But you're you're pointing out great filmmaking, really, right there. Yeah. In that, just such a subtle thing as choice of music, uh, but beyond just the idea that oh, it just fits with this or something. But instead, deliberately choosing something to juxtapose, but not in a postmodern oh. way where they're where they're in on it or whatever. It's like, hey, look at how I'm juxtaposing things. But really yeah. choosing something deep. I mean, I know the movie AI didn't really isn't really all that fondly remembered per se yeah. but some, some when people when well i, I liked it all right but the, yeah. the scene in the movie when the stupid the fucking android is so like ah, uh, that's it this is oh everything is crushed for me and it goes to commit suicide i'm like uh you you crushed a will of a of an android <laughs> <laughs> that's to try to kill you know oh, i haven't is, seen that in a long that time is, that is it's dark. So I mean, that it's dark, dark as shit. So that yes. American werewolf scene, like you say, with the juxtaposition of that media, and also not just thinking about how, oh, you know, these are you know, these moments, you know, they 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 are jarring up to each other, but actually, like you said, he's never gonna really like the chance of him, even no matter if he could, it's not a full moon and he gets to hump or what, that, none of that's gonna change. He knows what his life is for the rest of it, and yeah. that's. Yeah, it's it's heavy duty, and uh, it's just genius. And and he did a lot. He he did John Landis. Uh, even though it's not Halloween. Well, oh no, this does fit with Halloween. He's the one who direct um um Twilight Zone the movie. Yep. Oh okay, but that and was cursed. Victor it was cursed because the guy got his head chopped off for heel. And his son. And his son. Well, yeah, yeah, you know who's you know whose dad that is. That's Jennifer Jason Lee's dad. Jennifer Jason Lee, exactly. The Victor, 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 Jennifer Vic Morrow's Jennifer Jason Lee's dad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. he's also in this movie called Message from Space that I love. From he's in a lot. Like a, he was a big oh, actor. I didn't no, realize he, that until later in life. He was like a big star before all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before the seventies, he had done yeah. a ton of shit. Then his star kind of to, to wane some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was he did that Japanese film Message from Space, which actually it was a big deal in Japan. Uh, Kenji Fukasaku directed it. But he's he's respected. He was. Yeah, but then he started doing these. Italian films, and he did Escape from the Bronx, and he's oh drunk. oh the one the one we'd like to talk he's about. He's drunk yeah. in every scene, and it's just it's just absolutely yeah, Vic Morrow. Yeah. 
But oh, but here, but on Rest another note, because uh, I love you. Rest in, you know? rest in peace, Vic. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Here's an interesting thing, though. There's a uh, while we're talking about it, and we're talking about obscure movies and whatnot. Um, one of my favorite movies that that's kind of lost in the catalog of J Joan Landis mm -hmm. is is um, this movie that he did kind of when he was in a dark place. Like he went into a deep depression after um, Twilight Zone because he was responsible for killing a man and and a child. You know, you know because. It was a Vietnam helicopter yeah. and it, the yeah, blade right. came He's off and it, chopped exactly their fucking right. head off. Yeah. Anyway, he was in a dark place and then he didn't want to do like a big this, that, and the other thing. So he did kind of a smaller, like kind of neo-noir movie. And it's called uh, uh, Into the Night. And I don't know if you remember that. It's a small movie with Jeff Goldblum and fucking um, 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 Michelle Pfeiffer. And it's like, it takes place in one night. And it's all this crazy shit happening. And it's like, imagine a noir, but if it had the same, the same funny splashes that like American Werewolf in London have, you know, like. I know I've seen that movie. Yeah. Oh, it's one of my favorite movie and no one ever talks about it. And no, if you watch that, I 100% guarantee you're going to, it's going to be one of your new favorites. I, I yeah, know Jeff Goldblum and is. Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, and the storyline is uh, after discovering that his wife is cheating on him, an insomniac aerospace engineer accidentally meets and tries to help a beautiful model on the run from some extremely dangerous people. And it's like these Iranian gangsters like who, who like was originally part of the Shah and then fled. And then there's these diamonds and there's, uh, there's and it's like... Okay. I'm sorry. I just want to show you on IMDb this picture yeah. of what Jeff Goldblum... Look at, look at the Jeff Goldblum... Oh yeah, that's not. <laughs> yeah, that's not the Jeff Goldblum from the movie. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I prefer my Jeff Goldblum from uh, Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. <gasps> yeah. Let, let me tell you something. The one in this one looked more like the the the, the Jeff Goldblum from Ten Speed and Brown Shoe. He has like a he has like a you know that kind of corduroy jacket with like the 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 patches. Doesn't he you get know? killed in uh, Death Wish or something like that? Yeah, he's he's or? he's one of the guys who hapes his daughter. Yeah. That is the inciting incident for the fucking. He's just in there. Dan Aykroyd like... was also listen. It's the Dan Aykroyd night, Josh. Dan Aykroyd was also in Into the Night. We're playing. Six oh yeah, degrees of oh. Kevin Bacon. Oh yeah, Bacon. John Landis. But apparently, we're that. playing Six he, Degrees of Dan Aykroyd tonight. You know who else is in it? David Bowie, um, Paul Mazursky, um, um, David, David Bowie. Also David have Paver. to be oh Cronenberg. Uh, Cronenberg has a David, cameo in it. Yeah. David Bowie was in a movie, the lead of a movie that our star of Hanato's uh, film that we're going to talk about at some point. The Man Who Fell to Earth. Yes, right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's in that. Yeah, he's uh, uh, Bernie Casey. Okay, in wait, that. wait, wait, hey, 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 listen, Hanato, yeah. you took a. Uh, I'm going to take a. I'm not going to take my microphone with me. Um, you guys. <laughs> that, hey, that's that's oh. our loss. I would love. Yeah, you might get a yeah. booty shot on the way out, though. If you're lucky. Oh God. Oh. Uh, I know what your to... problem is with anytime you bring up John Landis, and then you want to go into talk about Into the Night. All anybody can talk about can't get a word in edgewise. Kentucky Fried Movie. That's a. I mean that that's <laughs> that's the original um um Amazon women on the moon. The moon, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I showed someone that movie the other day, and they were like, "What the fuck?" Which is one, this? the Kentucky Fried movie or the Kentucky Amazon? Kentucky Fried movie? movie, yes. I said you gotta watch this shit. This yeah, is, I mean, this movie if you if you think about it, it's very influential. You know what I mean? And I think you know it's funny when you see the um, the progress of, of how if it wasn't for that, there would be no. I mean, sorry, if it if it wasn't for like network, you wouldn't have those things. But then if it wasn't for uh, Putney <clears throat> Swope, you wouldn't have a network. You know, and it's funny to see. How, if you look, it almost reminds me of music, you know, like looking at what music morphed into what music, you know what I mean? Like you see these Correct. comedy yeah. from, you know, and, and now we take for granted a lot of the stuff that went on in those well, movies. Well, I but, mean, we don't do anything new. We just keep regurgitating the same old things, except yeah. no one even, you can't make anything even resembling what the old stuff was because these a lot of the people making this stuff, they don't, they have no idea why that worked. They really don't. Uh, what was a Scorsese film uh, that makes me? When you say Into the Night, it makes me think of this. I know it, it's um it's a uh, uh, fuck um it, um it's in Manhattan. Uh, up it's all got, night. It's, up all night. It, no, it's got Griffin Dunn. It's um and 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 um 
and what's her name? Because it's in one night and oh, after fuck. hours. After hours, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It have um, what's her name? Jose and our cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's like a, it's almost like a West Coast version of After Hour, but it's violent though. Uh, uh, Into oh, the night. Yeah, Grip, yeah, Griffin Dunn is in that. Yeah. So bringing it back to the whole American Werewolf. Yeah, and and, and it, but but Into the Night have like action and violence in a way that. Like, let's say... Uh, um, the cover wouldn't make you think it's going to be as intense as it can get, though. You talking about you Into know, the just, Night? It, oh, yeah, the cover is just like, oh, it's a stopwatch and, you know, the girl, the, the, the woman's hand picking the Oh, you're talking about after, after, after Hours. After Hours, yeah. You wouldn't yeah. think it's going to be... Uh, oh, it's yeah. fucking great. That, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a little gem. That's, that's one of those ones that you wouldn't even guess that it's a Scorsese movie, you know? If you just watch yeah. that. Yeah, Kentucky Fried Movie has... You know the whole. Uh, everybody always remembers the, uh, the 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 satire of Enter the Dragon and his gratitude. Yeah, but, they say some uh, things. They say some things in there that I can't even hear Pete. You know when no. when the white guy is like, I don't even want to say it because I'm gonna get in what trouble. <laughs> yeah, you can't what do that. No. Nah. Uh, we're uh, talking, we're about talking about Fried Movie. Kentucky Fried Movie. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so And then good. there's the Groove Tube. Wasn't the Groove Tube kind of something like that, Joe? I remember I when I first moved here. Remember, um, not Kentucky Fried Movie, but do you remember uh, what's the one with Batty Batty Batty? Um, that's that's um that's a Hollywood Shuffle. Up. No, oh, Hollywood oh, Shuffle. Oh, oh okay, yeah, Shuffle. my brother. <laughs> he was killed in this. Yeah, he was my <laughs> only brother. <laughs> I met the dude. I met the dude who wears the um the 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 shoes with the goldfish in them. Remember the pimp? <laughs> that's oh, Antonio oh. Fargas. Antonio yes. Fargas. Right. That's a huggy somewhere, bear. Somewhere I have a picture with him. Um, I have a picture with huggy bear too. <laughs> We're going to have I, to find that. In for I saw him at a conference, a, 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 a conference of, of, of black exploitation brothers, like doing a, 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 um, a panel discussion. And they had like all the greats. They had the guy who played Goldie. They had Max Julian. They had, um, um, What's the guy who played Pretty Tony and fucking in the Mac? Um, um, oh, fuck, I can't uh, did, remember. Did they have Bernie Mac there? Or did Bernie Mac show up? No, I Bernie was Mac was Roundtree and like you know. They not, didn't not, have. Not, they didn't have. Not, uh, I don't, I don't mean Hunt. Bernie Mac. I meant. Uh, 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 come on, he played Mac in. So yeah, from the it, Mac. Yeah, exactly. I said he was there. Max Julian, he was there. Yeah. Yeah. Max and Julian. He, he, didn't he was play the Mac. Mac and Predator. No, Mac. Mac. Oh, Mac oh, Predator. yeah, no, he wasn't. And there. he also he wasn't. played. He also played the the like black rat, black nationalist dude and in, in, in car wash. Yeah, I um, that's Bill Duke, but he wasn't. Bill he Duke. wasn't there. He wasn't oh, there. This was strictly. This was strictly like guys who was in those hey, fucking. Uh, uh, Karen, do you did you ever meet Anne Marie Johnson? Who was oh, on I'm in sure Living I Color did. for a minute? Yes, that I didn't realize movie. that she was in Robot Jocks, which I was watching the other day. And was like, <laughs> Why do I recognize that woman from? And then it's like, and then I'm like, oh right, she's I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you, sucker. I remember. I think I met her. I know exactly who you're talking about. That, like, yes, because I mean, she yeah. plays the girl where they get back to the room and and uh, and Ken Ivy Reigns has the jacket with all the medals. She's like, well, right. He's like, well, you know, it's not really the, you know, this is for surfing. Yeah, this, this is, is for typewriting. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, and so right. she's like, well, that's okay, you know, because I kind of yeah. lied a little bit too. She takes her wig off, pops Take her the boobs right. out, the ass, her oh, legs. And this ass. <laughs> I'm trying to show a picture of her, but it's hard because this picture isn't so good. That's one of the fun, movie. that movie period. Oh, and guess what? Girl. You guys have all seen <laughs> hey, everything. Hey, she's I don't know none of movie. that kung fu. Me neither. Yeah. Want to fake it? Want to fake it? <laughs> but but um you hey and speaking of the the idol of 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 jack spade is is slade uh who is played by who barney uh, casey from from dr black and mr and hyde mr hyde okay well yes. so wait listen now that you bring it up then hananto we may as well get everybody you know so i want to make sure everybody knows exactly what we're talking about here because if they've not seen it uh, they need to know exactly what. Dr. Oh Black. boy! Oh boy! Oh God, are you? This is what happens when Hanach is out drinking way too late. Too many caparinas. Yeah. Caparinas. This can yeah. happen. He wakes up the next day all, all dehydrated, needs lotion. I need lotion. I'm ashy. Okay, <laughs> you guys ain't gonna believe. 
Oh, you I ain't gonna believe the that, that they want to yeah. do a, a black Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde. So it's like, well, what would happen if a black man turned into a monster? Well, he'd be ashy, of course. Right? I'll, tell you, be, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Awful. I'll tell you what. <laughs> this that would be more tasteful than what <laughs> I, 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 is going on here. And let me to tell you, my brother. There okay, is, so there is there is a kind let's of take taste. down. Let's take down the graphic now, you guys. They, I think they've seen enough. Um, okay, so. What we're dealing with here, first of all, is very. This is a movie. This should be. This don't belong in the horror genre. This belong with. <laughs> no. This belong with Malcolm X. This belong with. Uh, uh, do the high thing. For us now. What's the one about from in Birmingham? Salma. Okay. This is uh, the, the, the spook who sat by the door. No. Okay. <laughs> so days. yeah. <laughs> okay. So so let me to fucking explain you something here. Let me get down my zard. I was just squared away for this. Okay. So first of all, it, it's, it's apparent that they only called it Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde, just so you know that it's like a, 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 a Mr. Hyde fucking hip off. But, but in the movie, his name, his, his name is, Do, is Dr. Pride. Okay. Of course, <laughs> the black guy is Dr. Pride. And he's a very well-to-do black, like what you would aspire to, like black, black excellence, poor okay? okay. <laughs> black excellence. Dr. Excellent. Pride, okay? Dr. Henry Pride. Now, when you see it in the, in the beginning, he's giving like a B12 shot to a fucking hooker who has, her titties is out, okay? <clears throat> and they're having a conversation where he's like, hey, you know, you really got to stop this hooking or whatever, you know, like you, you, you need to, you, you know, you're a beautiful girl, you should do something. And he's like, she's like, oh, shit. You're going to tell me about her from you highfalutin, you act white, that white coat suits you, you act white, you talk white, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then he, she goes through this whole tirade and he goes like this, he goes, nigga, please. <laughs> you know, it's, one of, it, 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 it's one of these. Okay, so then, mind you, in the fucking, in his doctor's office, Cannot. okay, think about this, in his doctor's office, instead of like some inspirational poem or, or a thing of a diagram, he's got a painting of Donny Hathaway and a fucking large, huge uh, photograph of, 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 of Han O'Neill from Superfly <laughs> in the doctor's office. Anyway, come to find out. Oh, and the problem she's coming in there, she have a hepatitis, okay? Let me skip forward a little bit. We come to find out that he's working on a miracle cure <clears throat> for uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Okay, now the reason why he's got to do this is because his poor mama was died from cirrhosis of the liver. Okay, okay. and also that hooker happened to have his cirrhosis to the liver. Okay, so he's trying to drink a lot of drinking in this movie. Exactly. Now you, you come to found out though, you start to see, oh no, I see what's going on here. Well, I'm well, not going to get to that yet. So now. You have this woman who come in and oh, oh he he give the the cirrhosis to a to a a lab hat. He give the the serum, you know, yeah. and then the fucking lab hat is he turn white into a white hat, and then the other hats that's in there, they start to be afraid of him. Okay, then somehow he goes to check something. He comes back and all the other hats is like eviscerated, murdered by the white hat, and he's like. Oh, the pigmentation is gone and the violent something such or whatever. He's like, mm, <laughs> and he's like, something is wrong I with the chemistry. What that's a metaphor for. Yeah, wait, then he goes, something's wrong with the chemistry. Mm, the chemistry is off or whatever. And then he have this wife that's like the worst actress. You know, she's like, talk, she's like, you know, come back to bed, honey. Or he's like, I got to figure out this, the serum, the, the calculations or whatever, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so then he tries to inject, long story, he tried to inject it into this fucking like homeless bitch that come in who has cirrhosis of the liver. And then she turned into a thing and tried to choke out the fucking uh, woman. You know, she turned pale white and trying to choke. Anyway, then he's just at his wit's end. He's like, I need a life subject that's not almost going to die. Whatever. He's like, I don't know what to do. Then he goes and he gives himself the serum. Okay. Then you have Bernie Casey, the strong ex-football player, like big, strong, strapping black. Yeah. Uh, uh, or uh, almost made it to the Olympics. And yeah, he's no joke. Yeah. No joke. Um, this guy, he's in, his, he's, he's in the home and he's going through conniption while he's changing. 
it's almost good more um, it, 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 it almost um, is more disturbing <laughs> than the it's almost more realistic than the transformation of of America werewolf in London where he go like this. Anyway, but the fucked up thing is now he looked like he sound and looked like a woman having an orgasm. He started going like this. Oh, oh, oh. Like, and he's going through this and he's like, what the fuck? Okay. Then they go, of course, he's going through the sweats and he's doing this. Then he come up like this and he look pale white, as pale as you can be. But he have like a salt and pepper afro. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, come to him, remember when the hooker in the beginning had told him, if you ever want to look for me, because she's flirting with him a lot. She goes, if you ever looking for, you know, some action, whatever, you come to the to the moonlight lounge or whatever. So this place is in like Watts or whatever, you know, it's like in the black area or whatever. Right. This, this so movie he's rich. is great for, for classic LA. It really oh, is. Like some it has seen. all, it ha it's like a Tarantino movie. I mean, it's like Jackie Brown. It, it, oh, this it is one. at Watts Tower and everything, right? Uh, uh, there <laughs> is, <yes. laughs> so, 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 okay, so now, we in, we, okay, so now he's going, he's in his hall's hoist. He remember, he's a very hitch doctor who live in the white area now. You know what I'm saying? He's well to do. Okay, now he's going into the, uh, but he's hip though. He grew up in the, he, he come from the street. Right. Um, but he come to, but he's as the hide or whatever, you know? He's, he's, he's have the salt and pepper afro and he's a white face and stuff. <laughs> He get out the fucking car, and of course, there's some ne'er do well uh, Saul, Saul brothers, okay, on the corner, you know, talking shit, whatever. And they go, and, and it's the typical stuff like, oh, Jack, who, who this supposed to be, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it ain't Halloween, you know, that kind of stuff. And he comes out, and he's like, and he just sounds, he, he doesn't even put on any voice. He goes, he goes, say, where's where's the Moonlight Lounge or whatever. He doesn't he doesn't even bother to put on like a character, or whatever, okay. And then and then they go. And then you start to realize because the what the black guys is saying, what the what we supposed to be seeing. They go, this peck of wood wouldn't know about the about the midnight. Line. He's supposed to have turned into a white guy. White man, yeah. Oh, gotcha. We're supposed to actually believe that Bonnie Casey, <laughs> through the m magic of, of film makeup, that this wasn't just a, a black guy who looked ashy. <laughs> We're supposed to believe that everybody in the world see him. He's a Caucasian he's man. A white guy. And he's got like and then he, green eyes or something too. Or, or oh, they, they look like albino eyes or whatever. So he yeah. goes like this. He goes, tell me where's the whatever, whatever, you know. And then he go, oh, you dig this. He want to get some coon tang. This white brother want to get some coon. And then he goes, look, stop jiving or whatever. I want to go <laughs> find the moonlight line. And they go, listen, you, you ain't talk to me. like." And then he, the guy tries to take a... Uh, like a punch, a swing at him, punches him a couple of times. No effect on that. He's like Solomon Grundy, okay? And then, yes. yeah, and then what happened is instead of just being like Frankenstein monster and go, or whatever, yeah. this must have been Bernie Casey's um, ego and his arrogance or whatever. He's doing like heel martial arts, okay? Yes. So he's like, he's like getting in a stance and he's like, hey, you know, like doing like, like karate. And there's a part where he he hears the guy he goes like that and, and you're like what the fuck and then he like kicks a guy through a window and he goes like like a Bruce Lee kind of thing I go okay isn't so this, now isn't this one of the isn't this the scene where one of the the ne'er do wells starts doing karate back at him and is literally no that's later <laughs> no that's missing. silky that's silky the pimp when he's trying to. Silky the pimp later on is trying to protect one of his white bitch he, he, because she's a uh, coveted, um, and and so he tried to snatch her, and and that's when he tried to use kahari. But we're putting the horse before the car, okay? <laughs> um, um, okay. Oh, fuck. There's so much. I mean, I'm so excited. There, there's so much to there's so much to share with you guys here. There is a lot. Well, yeah. let, let me let me to cut forward here. Um, okay, he saw. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get your, What did you get yourself into? No. Yeah. Uh, okay. How can I say this? So then we find out. Let, let's say he he hunts a mock. He he beats the shit out of some pimps and some. He fucks up this yes. black bar. 
because he is a scientist who developed a formula to regenerate dying liver cells. It, it accidentally turns him into an albino vampire with a taste for prostitutes. Almost specifically. Oh, and then we and find out there's a, there's a good reason. It's a cross between the abominable snowman and Willie the werewolf. Yeah, exact, exact. Yeah, exact. Willie the werewolf? Yeah, Willie the werewolf. So wait, so listen. Then we find out more about his mother. And it's a sad story, okay? Where we find out because he tells this monologue to the hooker when he checks her up in the hall's hallway, okay? And he tried to force her to take the serum because he's trying to save everybody's life, but he's willing to kill people to see if the psychosis, the liver thing, gonna help. And yeah. oh, by the way, everybody in this movie happened to have a liver problem. <laughs> I was just gonna say everybody, 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 everybody he come just, across. Just, just, Yellow have eyes. And the just, bitch yeah, had hepatitis. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. serious. The bitch had hepatitis. The other one have this, that, the other thing. It's all <laughs> liver problems. Uh, he's lucky because everybody <laughs> come in contact. Okay, so the, he take her to this mansion and he show her. He goes, you know, my mother used, and it's this like cheery eyed. It's like Brian's song all of a sudden, and he's like a cheery eyed monologue Bernie about Casey. how he's Bernie Casey. His, oh shit! No, now Billy D. William. No, Bernie Casey was also in Brian's song. Oh, was he? Okay, I can't even remember. So. So now um, 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 he's, he's telling this, this, this woman, this hooker, about how his mother worked her fingers to the bone, uh, working as a maid at this place that ended up being, it was a front, it was a high-class uh, whorehouse, okay? okay? And she worked her fingers to the bone being a maid, and then at night she would took care of the girls. But this lifestyle was so much on her that she drank herself she was so depressed and so lonely she drank herself silly and she drank herself to psychosis to the liver and he said you know those dirty bitches uh, uh prostitute didn't help her and let her die so when he became when he became uh Mr. dr hyde. black or hyde or whatever he's he's killed these hookers and then these two detectives then get on the case and it become a procedural okay so then okay. you're dealing with a lot of dynamic you got social social unhest uh, black power. You have it. You have it. All kinds of stuffs going on here. But okay. let me to tell you something. Um, you start to realize that he's trying to the whole movie. He's trying to save the black community from psychosis of the liver. But in the meantime, he's trying to take them to the lifestyle out of the ghetto. He's trying to take this hooker to his white right. neighborhood. And then when he's do, he's turned himself into a white man to try to save them. He only end up killing the black people. So oh God, are you? And he have a salt and pepper afro. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, it become like King Kong. He's he's got the woman that he's gonna <laughs> inject with the stuff. Okay, he's hunting from the guy, and instead of Empire State Building, he's gonna be the Watchtower. Okay. <laughs> now the most the most ridiculous fucking part <laughs> of all the shit I just told you, and you're not this gonna fucking believe this. <laughs> You're not gonna fucking believe this. He's finally they finally caught up with him and he's like ugh, ugh, like trying to figure out which way to go, you know, like like um and now all of a sudden he's acting like the abom uh, 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 ab uh, abdominal soul man or whatever, okay? And he's going like ugh, ugh, instead of going like I'm just Bernie Cassie, you know what I mean? Wait, I mean he's a doctor, <laughs> but all of a sudden now he's reduced to just grunts and Well, boom. but yeah. he should have been like that the whole movie when he's high or when he's whatever the doctor fucking whatever the fuck he is. But pride black. And then white, but anyway, so he's he's there. Um, um, he he's in front of the watchtower now. If you remember, the watchtower have a significance because it was like, it, it was like a cultural center, and it was done by this black artist, and it was yeah. supposed to be like something to uplift the people of that after the Hyatts, and and it was supposed to be like something that was special, almost like a 9/11 memorial, something like that. And there's all these like beautiful mosaic and pro pro-black like 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 uh um bohemian arch kind of right. stuff like, going yeah, on there like, yeah like you said mosaic like tile mosaics and like okay you know, yeah, like, so like, so check this out like things right they got the drop on this fucking guy okay because he's got the woman like here and they're about to shoot him they got all the cops swat everything they got him finally but <sighs> they can't shoot why not because the girl but because of this okay the cops have so much reverence for the fucking what that that mosaic child and yeah. all that stuff have present that the black cop goes wait a second we can't shoot 
He goes, it'd it, it be like firing on the Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> okay. So in the same way that you can't fire when someone has a hostage, like he has yeah. to tell the guy, like, wait, no, not yet. You know, like, wait till he gets, <laughs> wait till he gets from out front of the, the, the watch, like the, the, the fucking arch work or whatever. <laughs> the, the, uh, the Afrocentric arch. <laughs> then so he because starts climbing. Of, because of that, that's how he goes, man, chucks the bitch out the fucking way, goes and he starts climbing, nah, carajo. And then it's just cheap. <laughs> and it's cheap because, you know, originally in the movie, I didn't tell this part, but like at a liquor store or some shit, a guy tries to shoot him so many times, of course. Oh, does not, yes. It no, does no, nothing he's shooting, to him. He, he shoots twice, and then they just keep adding more foley of gunshots that aren't being shot. And then he just, yeah. he grabs him and throws him into a pile of fruit boxes. Oh, fruit. Boxes it, like, of yeah, fruit, fruot and box. Yeah. Better, better than the, but but they're not, it's not even a big one. You can say that, well, we've got like five or six of them. We'll just lay them on the floor here. So he just runs him into a bunch of bananas and shit. Yeah, and pro produce. Um, <laughs> so, so he then of course though when he's on the chopper watch tower, then finally it's like okay, open fire, and he's like ah, and it's supposed to be kind of tragic or whatever, and then he just yeah. fall down and die, and then he's like his 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 lady come, his lady come and say like I love you or whatever, and he just don't say shit. He go like this. He, I thought he was gonna say something poetic to her like. At least we saved some good hook, you know, some hose from cirrhosis of the liver. And he just, instead, she says this whole thing to him, and he goes like this. He goes, I'm oh, sorry. He goes like that, and just, but it's just blood. <laughs> it's just cheap, you know, 70s blood, like head pain. It just go like yes. this. Mm. It, and then the credits, the credits haul up like that, God, you? and you go, oh, Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde, huh? Oh, God, are you? <laughs> Were they suffering from cirrhosis? Of the lever? I smell a sequel. Hey, which do you think has more, which is a more impactful movie? This or uh, Devil's Express? Oh, fuck. Who's in Devil's Express? See, oh, the thing about Devil's is? Express. Tanzania, uh, Warhawk. Warhawk, Tanzania. It's another one we watched for the, for the, <laughs> no, that was for Oscar night. We did the Hebrews Oscars where we wasn't going to watch the Oscars. We just did mm -hmm. our own Oscars of, <laughs> of like those kind of movies. Okay, um, but yeah, we told me. Yeah, okay, yeah. So listen, let me tell you something. The message of this and what it says about the, what it says about the social ills that is plagued, the, the, the black ghetto and alcoholism and, yes. and, and, and the so-called Native American and the so-called uh, white man, the white man. It, there, there was a lot that was very poignant, and um, I think that the the young blood, the young brothers these days don't have films like that to kind of give them knowledge of South Carolina. Okay, so Doctor Black and and Mister Hyde is you got to at least watch the trailer because it they seems like they the they cut the trailer up, put it together, and then they had some dude go write some raps over, like, just start writing poetry over this shit. Like, like Muhammad Ali type yeah, poetry. Yeah. But whatever's going on on the trailer, he's just illustrating that. So mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Black is beating the shit out of all these guys in the bar. He's like, when the boys go rushing, Mr. Hyde starts crushing. As the crowd <laughs> rushing, as the blood comes gushing. And he's like, what? Right, exactly. and, then, yeah. and then it's like, jump back, Jack, before your skull is cracked. And then, uh, and then and, the dude's and, doing fake karate at him, not touching him at all, missing him with every fucking strike. And they're getting... Pish, 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 pish. Yeah, that's then, silky. Yeah. And then he, gets, he chases a guy down with his Rolls Royce, and he like hits him, he blasts him first, oh. and pushes, hits him back against the wall, and then the guy pulls a switchblade like he's going to... That's what I was just about to say. <laughs> Before Silky gets killed, he's got nothing left. In fact, I can relate to this because... What the fuck are you gonna do? It's the last stand. It's like um, it's like in Saving Private High End when when uh, uh, what's his name? What's the guy's name who was in uh, fuck the 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 uh, huh? The guy who's like in True Romance and stuff, and he has drinking problem in here like no no he's not no, in Saving no, Private no. High End huh? No. Uh, anyway, when he's sitting there, he's about to die, and he starts yeah. shooting. He starts shooting at a tank, yeah. you know, because that's all he got yeah. left. He got like a handgun and he should. The fucking guy who's like a, a real problem. He can't he work in Hollywood. What, what part is he in? He's the cop with, with, with fucking Chris Penn. 
Oh, Tom Sizemore? Sizemore. Tom Sizemore. You remember yeah. he's like dying and he's like shooting at the tank with like a pistol? It's yeah. like that. It's like you, you're going to do whatever you can. So the whole voice is backing up to just crush him. And then he's like bleeding. He go like this. And he like tries to like as, as the fucking whole <laughs> voice comes. He's like. Uh, I'm going to push yeah. your radiator. I'm going to make it so your you car overheats. Hey, you might as well. I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, his kung um, fu was, was not as good as, as his last sandwich. And, and, and there's you, a, have, you have one one movie that maybe is cheesy or maybe is just, you know, nostalgic for you or one that you think <clears throat> could yes, be fun. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one. The one that I'm not finished talking about. Uh, oh, sorry, there's a I white, didn't know. Sorry. Th- I'm kidding. <laughs> but there's a white, I didn't know if there was a reason for anybody listen, to watch it. Now. There, heard there's a white pimp in there that is worth the price of admission. I didn't have time to talk about everything <clears throat> that's wonderful about this movie. Um, but, but there's a white pimp in there. And the, ugh, fuck, I can't remember his name, but it's one of the funniest fucking thing um, at, at the Moonlight fucking lounge. And this white pimp is, is at odds with Silky the pimp. And Silky is strung out on Her- Heron. And the white pimp sells him the hair on. So he owes him like the trading for like one of his bottom bit. You know, there's a, there's a whole dynamic, a, a B storyline between these pimp. It, it, frankly, it have a lot. It have a lot more on his face. It just looked like your average black it Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde beautiful. movie. But there's a lot more uh, under the surface. But anyway, go ahead, because I don't want to step uh, on you guys. Well, but, and, you know, um, <clears throat> Bernie Casey, Cleopatra Jones, some more black exploitation. Mm. But after the same year he does Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde, the man who fell from who man who fell to earth. Then he follows mm. that up with Sharky's Machine. Mm. Oh, that's a mm. winner. Uh, never say never again. He plays Felix. Spies like oh. us. He was in Spies Like Spies Us. Spies like us. That was the and Revenge of the Dirge. He's the head of the Delta Delta Delta. That's you, right? you and Jefferson. He's the head of Lambda yeah. Lambda. The, 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 lambda, lambda 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 Lambda. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Lambda. He goes, he in- Hold it, coach. Hold it right there. <laughs> uh, also, um, you know, we got to talk about uh, Steel Justice, which was wait, wait. Uh, which Justice. is a action flick starring. Uh, oh, Dudikoff. No, no, oh. it was starring the, the the Cobra Kai instructor. Oh, your boy Martin Cove. Martin Cove. Cove. Wow. Steel he, you no, know, I, I watched oh, that. Yeah. A bu- I rented that a bunch of times because it had Martin Cove on it. Is he with a shotgun and a forty. Force, it's like ex-military guy. Yeah, re- yeah, yeah. But he's in a lot of shitty movie. movies. <clears throat> he's got the the the. It, this thing's called the uh, some the Manville gas gun. It's also used in the movie. Uh, Dogs of War with uh, oh oh uh, Christopher Walken. That's a really good movie though. Dogs of War him, is legit. Wait, what was this one called? Uh, Steel Justice, S T E E L E. And so he's got the gas gun. So it's this giant grenade launcher thing blowing up bad guys left and right. I love the shit out of it. And there's a scene where he gets he's poisoned or bit by a snake or something crazy, and he and he cuts himself and then sucks out the blood at a buffet and then uses like the chafing disc. To, <laughs> oh, to cauterize. Yes. Look at, by the way, Josh. Oh, no, he uses a frying Josh, pan. Josh, I need you on my trivia team. <laughs> yeah. I you do. Uh, I hope, I hope your us, trivia is, is just shitty movies. Slay. We should no, we should go to a bar because the fact that I remember Tom Sizemore out of nowhere too, I was like, Damn. that helped me because that was gonna kill. Me. I wouldn't have been able to concentrate because it's one of those names I know, but you know, it's just a brain fart. Everybody knows whatever. it. Everybody knows. It. But yeah, that movie Steel Justice has Martin Cove, Seal Award, who is quite good. Um, I like Seal Award very much. Uh, she's the wife in The Fugitive. If you remember people, Harrison Ford, where his the one armed man and everything, Seal Award. And she, I didn't know, kill my wife. So sisters, right? Ronnie Cox. Um, oh, uh, honey. Bernie, Bernie Casey. Mm, uh, Bernie Joe Casey. Campanella. Sun Teco. Yeah. Sun okay. Teco. okay. Okay. Sun Yi. Um, <laughs> wait. Uh, um, you ever see the movie Bernie Case? It's like a he make of Get Carter. It's it's called uh, Hitman. No, I did not see that. It, you you have to fucking see that. It's it's just it's just a black version of of, of Get Carter or like that Payback. You know, with uh, fucking. Well, when that's all. That movie uh, Payback is is yeah. Back, the, it's it's what Mel Get Gibson, Carter was based on. The books. Uh, not Get Get Carter is diff- different. Get Carter, but, but it's based on the oh no point. Uh, you, you, point the movie blank. you mentioned earlier, point, point that's blank. that's yeah, the yeah, one based on the Donald Westlake books. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. The so it's and all that stuff. <laughs> so this one is the get caught a hip hop though. Um, um, yeah. where his brother gets killed and you gotta go back home and all that stuff. Which is yeah. kind of why they used him for. That's the same plot yeah. as fucking. I'm gonna get, get you, Saka. Get, but get at the Carter end, is a brutal movie, by the way. Oh yeah, it's and so is, Kane, so is Hitman. Oh well, well Michael Kane. Yeah, was it? Yeah, his his uh, nephew gets the shit kicked out of him. He goes, "Here's five. Here's five quid. Go take some karate lessons." Or he busts into the here's wrong guy's house. Here's five quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He busts into the wrong guy's Michael house. Michael Kane. Yeah, Michael Kane. He busts into the wrong yeah. guy's house, and he, his, he goes, "Here's right, five dollars." Yeah, oh, sit down. Right, right. You're a big man, but you're out of shape. Yeah. Me, I do this <laughs> for a living. You know, it's just like he's 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 one of the best. But imagine Bernie Case doing those stuffs, okay? And at the <laughs> end, I bet you, I bet you, um, um, your boy. Just, just sullen uh, and just straight faced. Yeah, pretty much. Except <laughs> for at the end, when he's, he, I bet you Michael Caine never said this in the head, you know. He's about to kill, like, the, the guy that sold him down the river, the, the fat black guy, who I think is also the bartender in fucking um, Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde, but that's beside the point. He goes, he gives him a chance to, to, to get away, but he's never going to let him go. And he go, he's got a shotgun and they like on the chop of something, almost like the end of Dark Man. It's like some kind of, at some kind of like oil mm -hmm. he find or whatever the fuck it is. And then the guy, he goes, hun, you know, and the guy doesn't want to do it. And he goes, hun, Uncle Hemus. And then the guy, he goes, hun, you fat, greasy middle. <laughs> the guy starts, the guy starts hunting. Yeah, he goes, he goes, hun, Uncle Hemus. Hun, you fat greedy And then uh, the guy starts hunting and he just shoot him in the back with a shotgun. But the way he says it, it should have won an Oscar. He oh. go, Hun, Uncle Hemus. Hun, you fat greasy, you know. I mean, what a <laughs> Uncle he Uncle Remus, huh? He goes, Hun, Uncle Remus. Hun, you fat greasy. <laughs> uh, no, I like no, that no, kind of I don't know about dramatic. you. Not dramatic yeah. in any way. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I like that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, See, that got you all hot and bothered. you like, fuck, no, Bernie I, Case. I just, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. I do. It's a, that's a tour de force. That's <laughs> a tour de force. That's the what I want to see in my movies when I see force. them. Uh, a lot? Okay, here's a... I, I would bring up Sleepaway Camp, which I, I think people should watch, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, no, God, I, I haven't seen bit, that. It, it's a bit too well known. Um, uh, here's a movie uh, by Michel Suave, uh, <laughs> Italian director, who also did a, a stage fright, uh, Italian giallo. He did a movie called The Church, produced by uh -oh. Dario Argento. Oh wow! Uh, and he even has Asia Argento as a young uh, and a young as a young girl in a role in this movie. What year is this shit from? Uh, 1989. Oh, okay. And so she's I have, made, I have made people... Uh, it, uh, according to Wikipedia, it was supposed to be the originally conceived as the third installment in the Demon series. So Demons and Demons 2. Uh, but no, <laughs> they turned it into this movie about a bunch of Teutonic knights at some point charge into some town that's accused of witchery and demon shit. Oh, slaughter course. everyone throw them in a giant mass grave and then put like bury them and then seal them in with an enormous cross and then a giant cathedral gets built on top of it oh, uh course. they're doing work on the whole thing stuff happens this new librarian shows up and he wants to like investigate and shit happens uh smoke and like old farts get released from inside this Ooh. thing and uh now a bunch of people get possessed. Uh, and this movie just gets insane. And we're talking like dude jumps on top of a jackhammer while it's going. Uh, at some point, uh, everyone gets trapped in there. There's like a wedding rehearsal. There's like children, all kinds of crazy stuff. People are just getting whacked left and right by supernatural powers. But I got to tell you, so, yeah. if you if you watch this movie, you you couldn't get away with just a joint. You'd probably have to have one of those dipped in every new Wax millennial. <laughs> yeah. Dab, yeah. You dab, got shoe, dab, yeah. Shoe, 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 po yeah. shoe polish and licorice. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's got dipping dots on it. And, you yeah. know. You have <laughs> to have that. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, it sounds kind of uh, like <laughs> demons. Like it, it sounds like a hip hop of demons anyway. Because isn't there like a, a theater or whatever that they get trapped in and that the demons yes, kill them? Yes, yes, it's, it's similar. Instead of that, but, it's a church. But but this one has less. It's crazier. Sense. It has less sense. Oh cemetery oh, cemetery man. man. Is, That's yes, right. With, with, That's uh, where what's his name uh, came from. Rupert Everett, right? Hooper Everett, that's what he was, yeah. That's a that great was, movie. That's a yeah, lovely, yeah. and it's hard I to find, by that. the way. Hard to find, I've been looking for it, watched it many a time, love it. Uh, Karen Bryant. You're sure to he, sing that Argento is too stylized and that it's too slow, so. This movie's well, not that slow, though. Well, this movie, it, it, this movie is wackadoodle from start to finish, and the librarian gets possessed and then starts acting real creepy around Asia Argento, and like looking at her sh shoes and knee high socks and stuff. And ugh, it gets, it gets, this movie just gets whacked out. And I had a friend of mine at, at my house. I'm like, hey, let's watch this. And he's like, what the fuck have you seen <laughs> on television? <laughs> and, yeah. it, and, if, and if weird, uh, uh, and by the way, the whole time you're like, you watch this movie and the setup feels like, oh, this is foreshadowing, but also they want you to feel like, ah, oh, you know, this was a, a wrongful death of this village. And then you watch the whole thing, you're like, no, those motherfuckers must have been actually satanic worshippers. And the knights were great. And watching them all get slaughtered should have told you, like, we should have done a better job or something, you know. But if you mm. want to follow up with weird, churchy-based, uh, church-based uh, horror film, about, there's another movie yeah. called uh, Black Waters or Dark Water. Dark Waters, I think it is. And it's not the with one Mark with Mark Huffalo? Like, no. I'm kidding. Oh, no. I'm kidding. This I'm thing, kidding. I'm kidding. This thing is weird English film from like the late 80s, early 90s, and it is weird, slow, and involves like satanic nuns. What, what I want to address something that that young man said about, uh, yeah. I don't know how oh, young Argento? the man is. Argento? Yeah, and, and I understand what you're saying. If you're going to compare that to, mm, I don't know, a, a horror movie these days that is new and scares, you, scares the shit out of you, you can't compare it to that. It's almost like you're watching this movie, it's like, okay, if you go, he said it's like kind of slow and boring or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But it's like saying, okay, so let's say you go to Italy, okay? And then you go with your significant other, whatever you're doing, you walk around the fucking water streets and you look at these old church or whatever. You wouldn't normally do that in America. That would be boring if you walk around and look at the architecture and look at churches and stuff. But seeing as how you're in Italy, you're looking at something from a long time ago. You're soaking in something that you're not familiar with. You, you, you're getting a taste of a different culture, something from a long time ago, something that is, mm -hmm. is, is, is just not of what you're used to. And you, it's, you're getting an understanding of shit in a perspective that you never had before. When you watch a movie like that, you're not watching it to go, okay, time to be scared or whatever. You're like, what is this movie and this Italian perspective from the 70s that's that's uh, surreal and it may be slow but look at the shots and look at the, the <clears throat> think of it in, in a different way don't compare it to well this not as scary as uh the conjuring right. or whatever the fuck no, it is i, it, I it, agree it, with you and I, I would like to add to that and also yeah. people don't really watch movies anymore they're just something they, they just go okay turn the movie on okay now the movie does stuff and i i'm gonna i'm gonna observe it instead of you know, play on my phone and do everything. I'm not, they're say, never really, do people don't really watch. Yeah, they I'll don't really sure watch movies. Make, right. they, 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 they try to have, they expect movies to entertain them instead of sit down, plop your butt and set yourself, go, okay, I'm going to just sort of, I know I have all these weird expectations, especially <laughs> looking at cover art, like we talked about. I'm just going to sit and let the movie show me what it is and, and just be in it. Let it happen. And by allowing this movie to, in, in any way that it can, submerge you in the experience, all of a sudden it becomes something that is not just about a bunch of stuff flashing around trying to get your attention. Yeah. You get to partake in the story and try to let it take you with it. Even when it's absurd and, and hilarious, it becomes hilarious especially because those movies that we'll talk about are often incredibly sincere about what they're trying to do. And that yeah. sincerity is why it rings in such a way that either might bring laughs unintentionally or why you might, you could, you could say what you want about it, but ultimately you're, you start to, you develop affinity for this movie. Well, and I, I will agree. see this. 
the sincerity and the reality of do you guys remember henry portrait of a serial killer oh yeah yeah in fact, with what in fact with what when i name. met yes uh uh uh, uh michael uh rooker, R- rooker. When i met yeah, Mike, yeah. i met michael rooker at a party and i was like Dude, dude. That and movie Henry was like a serial killer. He looked at me and he went, "Oh shit, okay, we're gonna talk about you know movies like that." And, yeah. and I, I brought up a bunch of other old stuff that he had done that I was a big fan. I got to meet Jim Brown from uh, that uh, Jim Brown and uh, 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 oh come on, uh, Fred the Hammer. Slaughter's big hip hop. Oh yeah, right. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I met Fred him Williamson. on the set. Uh, yeah, I met him on the set of of uh, uh, Outlaw Johnny Black, and I oh, went up shit. to Fred Williamson. I go, no one gonna ask you about this, but why don't you tell me about your time on the new barbarians? And he just looked at me like, Oh, so there was this guy, Bomba. We called him Bomba because he would use way too much explosives than was ever needed for a scene. And he was lighting this up and he was talking yeah. about all this. And I'm like, how about when you did the new gladiators for Fulci? And at some point, you're not even in the movie, and your character's got his motorcycle helmet on with the she with the visor down. And, like, and, and that's a like, giant oh, right. tool. Yes. That's Italian truth, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I started asking about all the B movies he did, all the crazy shit. And he was just, he thought that's that what they want to talk about. That's the yeah. shit they want to talk about, you know? They don't want to talk about the, the, the shit everybody asked them about all the time, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, check out the yeah, but- church and check out uh, uh, Black, uh, Dark, Black Dark Waters, the Italian, yeah. uh, uh, British horror flick. And, and those movies, they take a little bit of, it, you, you have to train your brain because um, it's like, you know how if you haven't had a book in a while, your attention span goes down. And when you try to hit a book, you, you, your mind starts wandering, you know, after a certain amount. And then it take a little bit more training to kind of get your brain heating again or whatever. Yeah. Watching okay. these movies like this it, is it? like um, y- you get used to, oh, back then they would let a fucking... Uh, uh, you know, a master shot, and they let a guy, like, walk over, do some shit, you know, like, he's not, it's not just a cut, 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 and it takes a while to get used to, like, oh, uh, uh, you, you know, you might look at that as, oh, it's boring or whatever, but you, 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 you get they used to looking at shit. Setting a mood. Setting yeah, a it's, mood. you're looking at it in a different way, and, and even in a cheap movie like, um, or a great classic like uh, Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde, there was some stuff that, frankly, in the beginning, before he injected himself, there was some shit that was boring, and it was based on the fact that, you know, they didn't have a lot of money, and there wasn't a lot of uh, money for, let's get into these close-ups, and let's do the touche, and this, all this shit. So sometimes there was some long and boring shit, but then my mind would wander into, God, I wonder what happened here, and what was that... (laughs) You know, like I'm thinking about the chime that it was made and uh, what you, 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 your mind starts wondering about different stuff. And it's an experience like your imagination starts going. And I have so much fun with these movies. Yeah, that, everybody thinks a doctor's uh, office is just filled full of beakers, full of multicolored liquid <laughs> bubbling for no reason. Yeah. And then but you have a poster of Donny Hathaway and fucking <laughs> oh, Han O'Neill. And, and you start to laugh about certain shit that. It's a, a far gone era that will never exist again. And you're looking at a chime capsule yeah. that you, you, you're looking at. These guys made this shitty movie about pimps and, and a, a white Dr. Ha- I mean, it, 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 to me, it's like, what, what? That's boring to you? Well, and think of it now. Like if Rocky Horror Picture Show came out now, which is so great and so fun to yeah. watch. And, you know, it's like a cult classic, obviously, but they can't really make a movie like that now. Like that wouldn't. Like who, oh, no. nobody would finance that thing, and it's so goofy and weird. But when you look back at it, it's Susan Sarandon. It's got uh, Tim. Um, who could be Tim name? Curry? Who could Tim be Curry, Tim Curry? Tim Curry, exactly. Um, He's kind of irreplaceable. It's great. Meatloaf, may he rest in peace. Meatloaf. Uh, yeah, and yeah. So, and Tim I mean, Curry. Tim Curry, may he rest in peace as well. Right. I mean, yeah, Tim right. Curry is a. He, you forget how many really things. Really the sun is my destroyer. Yeah. 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 He, wh- Wait, what's that from? Stro- the legend. But, oh but shit! All that's right. See, because he's got that uh, see, prosthetic I'm, teeth in. The I'm forgetting. Is my yeah. destroyer. Yeah. I forgot. He's the fucking demon thing in the fucking uh, Prince of uh, Darkness. In, yeah, legend. In, in uh, legend, you remember legend with Tom Cruise and and Mia yeah. Sarah? He's yeah. the devil. He's the bad guy. Jim Curry. It looked like the devil. He had those right. two okay. big oh, horns. Oh yeah, right. With the yeah, like Jim yeah, yeah, Curry yeah. is that guy. Yeah, you, you can't even recognize him. He was always great. Yeah. 
Yeah, in Clue, he's in Clue, yeah. he's in, he's yeah, he's, he's it, he's Pennywise in it, caralho. Huh? You know? Is he? In the original, the um, TV. TV, the, TV the, 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 yeah. the 80s one, he's Pennywise. Oh, wow. He's fucking Do you guys remember terrifying. Lot, like watching Salem's Lot? Like, of remember, course. Like, that of was course. so creepy to me. That was so scary. And everybody yeah, Salem's Lot with, uh, like, oh with uh, Starsky and Hutch. Um, yeah. He, David uh, Soul. David Soul. Soul. But he looked, the vampire looked like Nosferatu. That's why it was so yes. fucking scary. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, all blue and he comes and in through looking, the window yeah. that time and kind of like flies. Oh, at the kid's home? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How about the, the doctor's office when the, the guy starts, or the girl starts, or the guy or the girl starts turning? In the doctor's office, I'm not him. I, I I'm not remembering. I remember a truck, a delivery truck, or something. I, the, you I remember have, the, the 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 cross on the head, and it's just doing. Yeah, that, I have. I have. I, I haven't seen that in its entirety since I was a kid. So I have these flashes of the movie. I I, I need to rewatch that one. Yeah. Hey, you it know, a, a good a good movie for vampire stuffs, as Hanach might say, Fright Night with. Uh, uh, it's uh, funny. I was just thinking of Fright Night. Yeah, that's that's Fright a great Night. movie. And it has but all the, the but it, it's scary but also funny. That's a great yeah, one. So kind of like the American Werewolf in London element, where it's really of its era with this '80s aesthetic, but also it's just such a an '80s light, kind of a light heartedness that has a darkness to it. But yeah. then he'll scary like like um yes, oh and yes. funny funny enough it have we was talking about earlier. It's all come around. We was talking about Dog Day Afternoon, the the boyfriend that wants to get the transsexual shit. He's the oh, yeah. fucking vampire in Fright Night. Oh, who's also uh, the main bad guy, uh, the prince in uh, Princess Bride. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. really? Uh, what is his that's name? The, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the boyfriend yes, in fucking... Like, he, oh, what is his name with the curly brown hair? I forgot. The... But yes. he kind of looks like Eddie Bauer. I mean, uh, oh, what something is his Bauer. Name? Um, I'll find him from not Eddie Bride. Bauer. Yeah. Um, What's the Bauer from fucking um, um, Scarface who played Manola? Oh, 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 um, yeah. It's Richard Bauer? Bauer? No, Stephen, Stephen Bauer. Bauer, that's it. Stephen he kind of has that look. He kind of has a yeah. look like Ooh, they would go for the oh, same God, part. Like one of his this guy's Stephen name Bauer. is Michael. Is this uh, the guy from Fight Night? Is Michael I something? Stephen Bauer's kind of hot. I can't he remember, but he remember his mom want to fuck the guy or whatever. But but also, um, you have the the vampire killer from the TV show, and he tried to. They, uh, that, that's that's a that guy's name. The the uh the the. Uh, Hardy McDonald. Michael My, Michael Michael. Um, fuck. Where is it? Michael okay. something. Wait. My, Michael like... uh, Michael Nuri Michael Nuri. Wait, I don't man, know. Wait, I'm I not, can't I'm fucking remember. Oh, I need to see. He's not one of the main. Okay, hold on. So get get dog. No, no. In Fright Night, he's he's the main. He's the main bad guy. He's gonna be like the second lead. And the girlfriend is played by the fucking chick from from okay, the, well, the annoying so neighbor just, from from Married with Children. They don't even like. Oh, yeah, Chris Sarandon, Prince Humperdinck. There you go, Chris Sarandon. Chris Sarandon. Yep. Yeah. No relation, I don't think. Roddy McDowell. I remember when Stephen Godfrey's the the friend gets turned into the vampire. He was oh Eddie uh, Eddie whatever what? he gets turned to like evil evil Ed or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like oh, oh Brewster, you. His first wife was Susan Sarandon. Oh, that's why her fucking that's name why is her Sarandon. Name is Susan Sarandon. She was married to this guy. She's married to the gay guy from fucking um, Dog Day Afternoon. And she didn't change her name back after. Interesting. Man, yeah, that was uh, Fright Night. Well worth watching. Love that um, movie. Fuck, I, I fucked the remake. No, the, he, the remake was awful. It's not awful yeah, I caught a little bit on cable. Talking, I was like, yeah, nah. 1985. Yeah, right. So it's yeah. Chris Sarandon, uh, William Ragsdale. Yeah, the kid from uh, wasn't the kid from who's the, the main kid? Is, you know what the kid is? The the kid right. from Herman's Head or whatever, isn't it? Herman's Head. Yeah. Oh, um, do you remember that? Oh, that was that TV Ragsdale. show. William Ragsdale. Is the one you remember like, Herman's yeah, head? He it was, was like, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, the four yeah. character, the four different emotions, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And then they exactly they kind of stole it for that Pixar movie where it's about like exactly. the emotions. Inside What's out. that shit called? Inside, Inside out. out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside out, oh. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, oh, yeah. um, we have delivered and then some, and then you know, on the heavy metal side of things, Halloween, I always listen to uh, King Diamonds, Halloween, nice, Halloween. <laughs> You are my boy. Hold, hold on. Yeah. Hold that thought, okay? 
Oh my and, God, uh, no, not, no, not again. Goat Whore, Goat Whore from Louisiana uh, just released a new album, Angels Hung from the Arches of Heaven. Right, okay. Very much Halloween uh, material with things like Born of Satan's Flesh, uh, The Bestowal of Abomination, uh, Ruinous Liturgy, uh, The Devil's Warlords, and other songs like Wait, uh, right? Voracious hey, Blood me Fixation. Hey, mind me again, what was the first one you mentioned Halloween, that you liked? Right? Halloween by, by King Diamond. Oh, God, are you? Oh, yes, the king. Halloween, you are my bride. And then, of course, How you go the merciful fate. Go miss the merciful fate, you know? Okay. That yeah. the King Diamond and is still in the you box. Know, come, come into my coven. Ah, become Lucifer's child. And then you can move what on to King you? Diamond. That's... And then you got, you've got uh, Them off of, uh, well, you've got the album Them, which is a whole uh, concept album about grandma comes back from the, uh, from the sanitarium. Oh. And they're what like, well, you, you know, how was, and Richie starts talking about, well, with them by my side, you know, I was basically never lonely. Like, who's them? And then as it starts going down the path of possession and all this kind of stuff, there's the invisible guest. That's another song on there. But everybody knows grandma. Grandma, welcome home. You've been gone for far too long. Yeah. That's against God. That, that's against my God. And and Abigail, the uh, second King Diamond album about uh, a house that it gets uh, inherited by the old by the relatives, but as it turns out, the witch that was burned there uh, is still alive. So Abigail. you're promoting witchcraft? Uh, that's against uh, that's against God, Poha. That's not yeah, and the, that's not in keeping with the uh, a Christian fellowship. Uh, that's not in keeping with the scripture. We're we're just uh, you know celebrating Samhain. Are you are you flying from the survival scroll? <laughs> um, listen, You're gonna be yeah, kissing Josh. my Blarney stone. <laughs> we, uh, we we can let well, you go, Hanata. We'll let him go, and then after afterwards, we'll we'll do a quick little recap of Machachev's win. God, yeah. I don't even know if I have the bandwidth to talk about this stuff. No, okay, we can talk. I, I promised all kinds of stuff on the show, and I knew we were gonna do such a deep dive on the movie. But they're so lucky. I mean, day. it. Th this is. This is just a different, it's a departure from the normal. It is different. It is different. Um, or, you know, uh, or, you know, and you've got, uh, but you, uh, trust me, listen to these Merciful Fate albums, the King Diamond stuff, at the very least, them and, and Abigail. Abigail is probably the best King Diamond ever with lyric, with a whole song as the possession moves down. And it turns out that Abigail is now uh, inside the, the wife and has taken over her body. Who's also, um, I believe, is also pregnant? Maybe no, maybe not. But either way, it's just like uh, it's got lyrics like, "Abigail, I know you're in control of her brain, Abigail, ah, and I know you're the one that's speaking through her, Abigail, oh, Miriam, can you hear me? I am alive inside your wife." Miriam's dead. Yeah, so. And that's funky. That's 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 a stone <laughs> groove. That's a stone <laughs> groove, my man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Abigail, sure you ought to be reborn when you're dead, Abigail. Yeah. Well, I'm sure our fans is gonna to hunt out to Chow Hackers and pick that one up uh pretty soon. <laughs> They're gonna uh, grab they hunt hide right out and grab Abigail. On vinyl on 45. On, yeah, or on, cassette. on 33, full 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 LP. Did any questions for the War Master tonight, or are they sick and tired of me? Oh, man. I, I doubt they sick and tired. Let's see. Uh, well, but people are just in general saying horror movies and metal go hand in hand. Brian Blaze, you're 100% correct. Uh, <clears throat> Enderbound is saying, this show ruled. Josh came back and talked to us about metal. You'll have to come back and talk to us about metal bands. Uh, Anytime. By the way, Hanach knows a little bit about the metal. I know a certain, a very niche uh, uh, window of metal, which is that early shit, uh, the swords and sorcery and shit like that. But I, 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 I have like, mm. the window is very, you know what I mean? I don't, there's a certain, 
but but I like a certain wheelhouse. It's a and sweet I spot. Little, and I told you my Megadeth story before about mm -hmm. Dave Mustaine and stuff like that. That you made love to Dave Mustaine? I did not make love no. to Dave Mustaine. No. But I gave him something he loved. I gave him a whole series of like the Green Hornet and stuff, and like he loved it. Yeah. So um, oh, I have I have like little metal stuff. Like I have a sitting over there my drumstick from Lars Ulrich from Metallica, and like I have oh. like brushes with metal. Do you know what I mean? But like you know. Oh, brush! Kind of what did he brush oh, you with? To, yeah, you know. <laughs> with his <laughs> drumstick. With his <laughs> with his drum with his what what they, he's German height or Austrian or something with his schnitzing groove yeah. he put his schnitzing groove against you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. nobody's gonna realize that's a reference to. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. The band is saying, Josh, you're just like him. So so the Ender Band must be super cool too. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah, Josh. So Sh uh, Shiger Tark is asking, are you doing any co fight commentary? Someone wants to pay me. A great okay. answer. That's why I agree with that. Come up off that bread. <clears throat> yep. Come up yep. off that bread. You could yep. you could pay me in serums uh, and and prostitutes, I guess. <laughs> oh God, are you? I don't mind that either. But but money is you know is good too. Green money. I, I like that one. And you know, it gets you in the door at the moonlight serenade. But you party. are training the moonlight you, lounge. You guys just fought a couple weeks ago with Victor. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't. Oh happen. yeah. It did not. You have been training people though, and you've been listen yes. though. Oh, heel quick, not to get too serious, but I was saying after that one that I don't feel like Henry's stock went down, even though he lost. And I feel that again, he's he's got so much promise that I feel like this will be the stepping. This loss will be one of those stepping stones to him becoming a, even a, a, a like a, a heel dangerous individual. You know, mm -hmm. like even well, more. Well, I always tend to to say that look i mean we will we'll go over our wins and our losses just as critically uh as as e either or because it's necessary and everybody loves to uh bask in the glory of the win and and they don't really want to the, the intent or the 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 instinct to go back and to tarry to be as 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 viciously uh real and, and accountable and introspective on your performance when you win is not usually the same. People want to save that, you know, when they lose, all of a sudden I got to, I got to figure it out. But when they're winning, it's like, oh, well, I, it's all, I'm winning. So it's all good. But, right. um, but I say yeah. that if whatever it is, that is what is needed to bring us to our best version of ourself. Uh, and if this loss is that thing that, that gives him whatever could be needed to be that much greater than he was that night and that much greater than he's ever been, then we'll take it. You know, yeah. if that's the kind of suffering that we got to go through, uh, it's, it's going to be well worth it. Yeah. And Rafael Asensal, great fighter, great human being. Totally. Um, you know, we don't ever intend to lose to anybody for nothing. And we're highly critical of, of how we could have performed and what we knew we could have done to have made that fight our win. But nonetheless, Rafael, he won that night. He was the better fighter. He's a great fighter. He's a great guy um, and a hell of an athlete. And it's an and, honor to be able to have the opportunity to, to for him yeah. to fight with us. You know, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And a wily old veteran, which you can't you can't put a price on on the things that he yeah. the, 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 the experience and the, and the trickiness and the, and the stuff that a younger fighter may have all the skills and all the heart and all the mm -hmm. everything. You just can't I keep saying this in our past episode. You cannot buy experience you know it just no. you, you have to earn that and yeah. i feel like this was this i as a fan of vich henry i i think this is um unfortunate <clears throat> the, the the you know the the the, the furnace that he's going to be forging in, in 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 this situation you know which is not sure. fun it's not fun yeah. to eat your vegetable and it's not fun to take your castor oil God, you? <laughs> yeah. like in the old no. uh you know in the old fucking cartoons, like in or no, the yeah, old uh, yeah, yeah. little Haskells, yeah, but you have to take yeah. your castor oil. Yeah, you have course. to take that one, and then you're gonna get big and strong like your uncle Hanach. You're never gonna lose again, for her. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're just uh, we're on this path. No, no matter whether it was in Japan, Russia, the UFC, it's the same. You know, it's on the path you know, to our, our greatest. One more thing before you go. Um, um, have you ever, speaking of the little Haskell and stuff, have you ever experimented 
or thought about maybe giving a sun sao like a hot footch or like a you know like pepper gum like head hot gum beforehand like oh would you like a piece of gum and he's like oh he go like this and go snap or whatever I tried, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't find him most of the time. He was off hiding, you know. That's I mean, true. Bad. I think you he, might want to think about some slick. of those tactics. Yeah, I know. Some of I those mean, tactics it's, can it's work. Consideration. Uh, I, I could have like, had like uh, I kept kept a little uh, dog around to go like steal his gloves, you know, so he could. <laughs> excellent fucking idea. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be. Like, it'll be like uh, what's that Pee Wee Big Adventure when you go like this. Would you like a stick of gum? And he goes, oh, fruit. He goes, fruit, please, or whatever. And take that. And then, mm, and his mouth turned black. God, I, <laughs> anyway. Well, uh, listen, yeah, Josh, um, I'm really glad that you were able to join us again. And, you know, for. for I'm sorry. I, I, I wore your host out. No. Again. For, no, for those, for those who don't, don't worry, know. Don't worry. do this we, to everybody. We uh, had well, Josh you know. on. Um, you know, he was one of our early, early guests. He was all the way episode number seven. I basically episodes later, you're back. I have, I'm either running Hanach into the ground, uh, this time Mm. without penetration, but Mm. nonetheless, uh, you get us Mm. going. If you go back, if you find any podcast that involves me and Hanach, it turns into an absolute (laughs) shit show of (laughs) insane obscure references to practically anything you can think of, including yeah. things like uh, freestyle music <laughs> and it's, other weird stuff. Right? It's and right. then uh, you can also find me uh, abusing uh, Karen's <laughs> considerations as, a, as an interviewer from all the way back, way back when, when at one point there was even a, a studio and everything yeah. and, or, and or visiting my gym. Yeah. Uh, at the time, that was great. and uh, only being practically given answers in uh, uh, Depeche Mode, Depeche uh, Mode lyrics, titles, exactly. and then and then uh, me fixing that dude's nose, which still lives on to this day. Oh, the, the one of you fixing <laughs> for people who haven't seen it, just oh. Google Josh Barnett fixes broken nose with two pens. It is one of my top videos still to this day. That gets thousands of views every week because people are still like, oh my God, that's insane. Yeah. I hope that makes my that, eyes that, water. I hope you use that Google money to buy that onesie. <laughs> <laughs> Google money. Well, listen, yeah. Um, listen, for real, we should, the three of us get together for real, like in person, get together over some drinks or something. That'd be really fun to see you uh, again. Cause we haven't seen you since the movie premiere with you and Michael Jai White. You should mention that to people. The name of the movie uh, It's not out yet. Outlaw Johnny it. Black. I don't know where you can find it. That was uh It will be, it you, will I be, think, I'm sure. I think that was just a tester. Uh, although I can't be entirely sure, but whatever Mike's up to, uh, you know, I, I believe in whatever he's doing. I'm yeah. down for any Listen, project that he's in, you know. If you like Black Dynamite, uh, the, the movie Black Dynamite, you're mm. going to like this because it's like, imagine the like the kind of Westerns that was a hound when Black Dynamite would have been a hound is right. is what they lampooning this time. And if you know that genre, it's fucking incredible. And it's yeah. three the hard it's, way. It's yeah. like a throwback. It's like a throwback. Uh, the kind of comedy. I wouldn't say it's like airplane, but it's like, I don't know, maybe it's like three amigos. I mean, it's just it's just it's a comedy. A, a Western comedy, but black exploitation right. Western. It's like Blazing Saddles vibe, but it's also meets got the Spaghetti old, Western. It's meets fucking spaghetti Western. fantastic. It's the old, the old movies where like somebody's beating somebody up, and it's like all the sounds of the slaps or whatever, like from the yeah. old Hong Kong movies and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's yeah. it's fun. It's and Buck and the Preacher. Stuff. Yeah, it's good. It's all good. that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. um, and it's just a lot of fun, and you get to see, you know, the War Master in there, you know, and Cowboy Spoonies <laughs> in it too, right? Yep. Cowboy uh, Sahoni is in there. He, uh, not... he played the character uh, Crack Shot Bob that I played yeah. in the sizzle that we all put together and shot to get this thing. Ah, Crack Shot yes. Bob. Yeah, but um, yeah, so then after that, that was before you shot that before you sent me a case of your War Master uh, uh, whiskey or whatever. Yeah, which is now, which is the future, which is the future. I will, I can get you some whiskey. Did you put ever, a couple we, of fucking we, stamps on a box and we, put that fucking Did we crank, arm? did we, uh, did we crack open a bottle when you were over for, uh, Neon we might Mutants? have, 
We might have, but <laughs> you brought over some, some tasty, tasty beers. I know that. Yeah, but it, it, those is long uh, gone. The, the taste of those, I need <laughs> no, more. No, like... uh, hey, listen, I'm dry, <laughs> Blondie. Gotta, gotta wet your whistle. Gotta wet your whistle. I'm dry. I'm dry, He's Blondie. I'm dry. Gosh. No, no, don't drink. No, no, no. There's no good for you. Mm. But now I need the whiskey. Give to me the one. It has properties well, of nutmeg, uh, uh, earthy. Yeah, earth, yeah. yeah. Tobacco, uh, what else in there? I'll spot. Well, I'll have to work on English lava, huh? Or your uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Exactly. What are you? That's also for alopecia. Or oh, no, what's the one that turned you white? The fucking um, your Alpine boy. Hill? No, your boy, uh, fucking the. Oh, oh right, the, the I the got reverse reverse alopecia. Or no, it's the one that Michael Jackson have. He's uh, like, right, right, right. I, uh, I got uh, what is that shit? It's oh, Vitiligo. 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 Yes. You're, you're oh, ignorant. Uh, you're ignorant. I got ignorant. Vitiligo. I'm sorry. Every time I hear Vitiligo, I just think of uh, Uncle Ruckus. I got reverse Vitiligo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha Uncle Ruckus is something fucking ass. Awesome. Oh, uh, but yes, yeah, you shall indulge in some whiskey. I will be happy to pour you some uh, Warbringer or the War Master Edition uh, single barrels that we put out. Uh, you can always find it at WarbringerBourbon.com. Whatever we got, oh. uh, the War Master Edition is available. We always do a blast of the emails. You guys can get some first options because when it goes, it goes. And however many bottles we get out of the barrel, that's it. That's all there is. Cool. All right. Awesome. And awesome. It's, it's in natural sarsaparilla wood or whatever, huh? <laughs> you, oh, yes. Absolutely. Or sandalwood. And then, <laughs> sandalwood. <laughs> sandalwood. And uh, uh, Joe Von Musk. I love sandal. Sandalwood's a lovely scent. It's sandalwood cask. Oh, God, uh, you sound uh, Listen, Josh, um, I'm sure like, really, really, bro, you're still talking to those two idiots. Um, yeah. She's excited that even she can even get a side glimpse of your Uncle Hanach from wherever vantage point she's on there. Even to hear the, uh, even to hear the dulcet, the, the, the chamber of my voice for her. The chamber of his voice. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it is quite soothing. Uh, they've, they've talked about, you know, which puts people to sleep faster, Hanach's voice mm -hmm. or uh, chloroform. Uh, Thankfully, they're both usually used in conjunction. They used in concert. They call yeah. it the Bill Cosby. Yeah, the Cosby. <laughs> like that. And then you do the voices that he do. They go, you know, like that's what the women do when you give it to You put the chloroform yeah. and she go like this. <laughs> It's so not funny. And you know what? The whole time she's thinking, as long as I don't have to watch Leonard Part 6. Oh, uh, I saw that in the theater of, 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 on Fart. <laughs> with uh, my mom. I, I, w I was so interested to see it because I'm like, what's with the like flying hawk people with the blades on Isn't the Isn't he like some long yellow jacket in that? In the he had thing? waffle grenade. It, it, that fucking movie. It was... <laughs> it, uh, my mom and I was exhausted from watching that. We was like... <laughs> Thank God uh, I didn't have to watch parts one through five. That was before yeah. I understood you could walk out of a movie. I was like, this movie sucks. <laughs> this movie sucks. I'm going to get my money's worth. I'm not gonna, they're not going to steal my money. I'm not going to walk out. I'm going to I'm gonna sit and finish Meanwhile, this. Meanwhile, life thing. isn't too short. Like, I always think about that. Like, when I'm at Heaven's Gate, it's to be like, you can't yeah. get the time back for the crappy yeah. stuff. You yeah. Just walk out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I was like, well, I can't waste the money. I got to watch this fucking thing. And meanwhile, what? Josh, that was your cue. You should have bounced right then. Just close your computer and be like, yeah, you're right. Peace out. Uh, well, this has been lovely, as always. Uh, we it will has. see each other in, uh, in, in heel life. Yeah. And, well, at uh, least. And also are... next year, may I suggest that we combine the heavy metal and the Halloween movie and watch Trick or Treat. The one. Oh, or, and, oh, or Rocktober Blood. Well, the Where one that I'm talking ready? about is with the kid, the kids, no, I know. um, yeah, it's got the Ozzy kid. Osbourne in it and all that. And you know, we, we had the one with Steven Quadros, which is called Shock 'em Dead, right? Quadros, okay, Steven <laughs> fucking Quadros. Quadros. Yes. Look, we're gonna go on a tangent all night. 50 episodes okay. from now, we'll have you back this time next year. All right, the witching I'm hour, awesome, <laughs> great Venom song. Yes. Right. Great to see you. See you later. Okay, my brother. Bye. Oh, dearest, oh, dearest, dearest Josh Barnett. I mean, look, it's so funny because it's like 
obvious. We can just like we, we, we should, we've, we've, we've been talking for a very long time and we can wrap it up. But I do think maybe we should just maybe do the Cheaty's Choice for this weekend. We get we don't have to do worry it. about 288 is what it is. Yeah. But Cheaty, well, go ahead. What? No, go. I said, yeah, I, I, good, good idea. Because I do. Lo- I love I love uh, I love seeing John. It's great. And I, it's funny. I, I'm just laughing because I literally said to him before, I was like, but we won't keep you as long as last time. It won't hey, be three hours. <laughs> if he's committed to do once he gets on here when you can just get him to here, he's going to have fun. He's going to want to stay, yeah. you know, okay. it's just to get him there. But okay. um, in terms of to Eddie, I wouldn't mind since we but I feel like we really bar- gave a lot of energy if we maybe just pick up maybe talking about some of the highlight of that next week even though it's going to be another week since it happened maybe we can just talk about a little bit of what happened next you know what i mean about true eddie our yeah, thoughts about that that's fine with me that's totally fine with yeah. me and i'm i'm cool with that the one thing i will say i wouldn't mind showing though is we can just look because this weekend we have calvin cater versus arnold allen yeah. and Cal- calvin cater for people who don't know He's a guest, a former guest of ours. It's episode 19. So if you're on festivities.com or on uh, YouTube, just look for episode 19 with Calvin Cater. And I also, Hanato, made that one available today. I, you know, I've been putting up the um, shows uh, on audio for audio downloads on Stitcher. I appreciate that. Amazon Music. Yeah, and and uh, and, uh, 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 and Amazon Music and, and Apple Podcasts. And I'm, I don't know what it is. And is. Sam Goody. Sam and Goody and Coconut. Radio Shack. It's at Radio Shack. Mm. Um, but uh, you mm. can find a bunch of them there. But I went and I jumped ahead to get Calvin Cater up since he's fighting this weekend. And we had so much fun with Calvin. Um, but yeah, so, um, but he. Uh, we did. He's one of my favorite episodes. I, lo- I, I like mean, me some too. Calvin. Hometown guy. And I just, I really like Calvin. So. Um, but anyway, Chidi last week did go one and one. He had picked Makachev, Aljo is in still, but so Hanato, uh, so Chidi's choice. He is still hot. I believe his record is currently nine <laughs> still hot. Chidi looks like the opposite of hot. Like I mean, his demeanor, like to to yeah. think of hot and versus he's just like he's 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 <laughs> like um, what's his he's name? So uh, he's like Bob Newharch. Right. Like right, he picks right. the he picks the winner and he goes like this. Right. Yeah. He's so he's so uh yeah. He he's just could he's just so chill about it. Uh yeah. So here we go. So we have his take for this Saturday, Cater versus Allen, and I'll be working this one uh with Alan Joe Band. Oh, you gotta hop that in. I'll line. be working this one. And welcome to another edition of Cheaty's Choice today. Cheaty is making his pick for the main event at UFC Vegas 63 between Calvin Cater and Arnold Allen. Cheaty is a bearded dragon. He yeah. does love arugula. Um so what we do here is we ball up the names. We are gonna randomize these names here. We've moved to putting the arugula closer together now as Cheaty oh. does like to go to the right. And let's go. <laughs> He's gone left twice though, but it's very rare. Did he win on the times he went le- uh, left? Cheaty does make sure. What if that's the, the only ones he loses? It's a good okay. question. So he's gone to the right. Let's see. Cheaty believes that Calvin Cater is going to get the win. Cheaty has spoken. Interesting. We shall see. We shall see. Calvin Cater. I mean, it's It's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a heel good one. There's two, there's two, two studs. Two studs in the in the they they both have the chance to kind of elevate. One of them's gonna springboard off of this win. I know. I just I I'm such a fan of Cater. So I am but too. Arnold Allen is awesome. Like I got no reason to not like yeah. him except he beat like our buddy Dan Hooker. Do you know what I mean? It's like I don't like yeah. him only because he's beaten other dudes I like. Now because I'm vain and I uh, um I'm I'm self involved. I. Arnold Allen have been a Hanach fan and like, um, con- okay. you know, like a comment commenter and stuff for yes, for a long yes, time yes. on onto my Instagram and stuff. 
So it's like, I have a hard time, even though I really like Calvin Keita, being like, yeah, I hope he fucks up. Uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, so right, it's it, like, it. it's two guys I like. Um, I get it. In this case, I'm just like, look, whoever deserves to win by how they fight and have present themselves, hope that person win, you know? Well, that whoever, makes very much sense. But I do, yeah. like I'm saying, I'm Calvin's my home. It's a hometown hero for me. So Listen, it's like I understand. I understand. And I and I have a, a, a fact for uh, Calvin Cato, but I'd be lying if I said I don't like Arnold Allen, you know, as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, my heart is, is I know, strong. it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Whew, it's tough. It's tough. Hey, listen, thank you, Todd Watson. Thank you for saying dope podcast. Much love. Thank you. Hopefully you subscribe. <laughs> Somebody and, said, uh, uh, the Ender Band said Arnold Allen sounds like uh, some kind of upscale heat shell star. It, it does. Come to Arnold Allen's. Well, anytime you can't trust a man with who has a true first name. I always true said that names, about, names, about names, Brian names. Stan. You can't trust a man like Arnold Brian Allen. Stan. But yeah, Arnold or, Stan. Yeah. yeah, on New Allen. Yeah, but but Brian Stan, it, 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 true first name. I, I think you can trust a guy with true last name before you can trust the guy who's the true first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, speaking also um, of this weekend, though, and I was telling people at the beginning of the show um, a while ago, <laughs> um, but that several fighters this weekend are former guests of ours. Uh, the Tim Means versus Max Payne Griff. Those two are fighting each other. So a goddamn listen, shame. That those both have been on, uh, you know, Max Payne Griff is part of the light skinned family here, and he and Tim Means have both been on the show. And we, uh, uh, to me, again, that's the same like you just said on the other one. May the best man win because our heart is torn on that one. Also, two episodes ago, Dustin Jacoby was our guest, but guess what? He's fighting Khalil Roundtree, who's a former guest of oh. ours as well. So it's like this might this be the weekend. most heartbreaking, gut henching yeah. card of all time for festivity. It's it's tough. There's a lot of festivities, friends. Uh, so may the best man win in all those situations. There, there's some good fights. And yeah, working this weekend with two of our former guests as well, Alan and Anthony. So yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward to it. We, we, we celebrated Light Skin History Month with, with, with Payne Griff, for Christ's sake. For sure. I know. I know. So yeah, it's good. It's good. So that's what's going on. Um, but yeah, this, is, uh, this was episode 57. So, you know, there's a lot of them for you guys to enjoy. And uh, if you got in here at any point during the show, you know, yeah, we talk a lot about all kinds of different horror movies and not just horror movies, but horror movies and then kind of scary movies and then some art house kind of scary movies and then just all kinds of tangents. <laughs> you just got to stay with us and, you know, maybe maybe sit with us for a little while on your way to work and then pick us up again on the way home and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, the episodes with Josh are always a lot of fun. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. And it's a departure because even though he's one of like kind of he's he's an all time great he's like a he's a legendary uh, MMA he's, he's fighter and, and and like but the last thing he wants to even go to, to is talking about MMA so it's like yeah. it, he talks about everything but and he's an aficionado on a lot of the stuff so it's a lot of fun yeah. to you know you know because you can hardly sometimes you can't find a lot of people to talk about the nooks and crannies with that it just don't go over their head or they go, I don't know what that is or why would you watch that or whatever, you know what I mean? Yep. So it's, it's, it's a joy because there's true and far and few and far and far and few between or whatever uh, uh, of that one, you know? Few and far between. Yeah, well, no, and that's the whole thing. Like he said, if you go back and look uh, historically, he and I have done a few interviews together and we always have fun. Yeah, and they always kind of degenerate into yeah like we said song lyrics or song titles yeah. or this or that and we we would try to work it in or we wouldn't necessarily go to we would just work one into the answer or the question just like playing a game and just amusing yeah. ourselves i've always gotten along with him so well uh so yeah i just i really i really really like him yeah he's a good he's a good one um yep, yep, yep. okay Wow. Okay, cool. So yeah, you can find us on Stitcher, Amazon Music, uh, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and then also over on uh, YouTube. It's Karen Bryant channel. Just hit that subscribe button. Also, find us on festivities.com. And uh, and yeah, next week we will be back at it for episode fifty-eight. Back at it, and and you can find me on 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 Hanato underscore Laranja for all the spooky Halloween. Uh, Halloween stuffs this yeah. Halloween cool. season, Carajo. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to hit the follow. 
And don't be afraid to he post some of the spooky stuff and tell That's your friends right. and your single and your single friends and stuff to follow your uncle Hanach and send me a DM, Scott. That's right. Okay, folks. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next okay. week. Ciao.